What is up, y'all? Welcome to Game Day with Heavy Cardboard. Teach, play, and discuss medium and heavy strategy board games, war games, 18xx. I am your host, Edward Euler. Happy to be joined by y'all because it's solo game day once again during COVID here at Heavy Cardboard. Today, I am very, very excited to bring y'all a proper, proper playthrough of solo playthrough of On Mars, designed by the Vital Lacerda, graphic designed by the Ian O'Toole, published by Eagle Griffin Games. And a big thank you to my buddy Ken. Uh, you guys know Ken from the show. Uh, I, don't have any, I don't have a copy of this. So he let me borrow his, so thank you, Ken, for that. So welcome, everybody watching live around the world, as well as after the fact. Um, I splurged a little today. I was lacking motivation, so I got me a London Fog to start. It's tasty. I do have some uh, Portland breakfast and some Gen Micha back down there as well for more tea. So hopefully you guys are enjoying a favorite beverage of your own. And I'm excited about today. Today is, or concludes, I guess, Redemption Week. Uh, doing three playthroughs in which uh, solo games where I got something wrong on the rules and that didn't sit well with me. So I wanted to remedy that. So, uh, hey, Lacerda, going down today. And I'm going to make it 3-0. That way. There you go. There you go. 3-0 and this week. All right. Uh, what happened in the last one? I, I got a couple rules wrong, and I was very unpleased with that, and so I don't want that to stand, so I took that video down, and I'm doing it proper today. So hopefully you guys are excited about it. I'm very, very excited about it. Feel pretty comfortable with this now, and looking forward to it. So thank you. Before we get started, to all the patrons who help support the show, without them, this isn't happening if you guys do enjoy today's show, give it a thumb down below. I certainly would appreciate it. It really does help the channel. There's a reason that every YouTube channel in the world asks for your thumbs as well as your subscriptions down below. So please do that. Also, if you do want to support the herd, support the show, join the herd, and you think the work that I do here at Heavy Cardboard is worth a buck or two a month, I certainly would appreciate it. You can go to pledgehc.com, support the show there, as you can see directly below me right now. Speaking of which, got more podcast content also coming for the podcast over on heavycardboard.com or your favorite podcast app. So let's get into it, shall we? On Mars, potato farming. Not really, but you guys have seen The Martian, I assume. So let's get into it. If you guys are ready, I'm ready. Let's dig into The Martian. Really? On Mars. <laughs> Following the success of robotic rover missions, the United Nations established the Department of Operations and Mars Exploration, or DOME, for short. The first settlers arrived on Mars in the year 2037. In the decades after the Mars base camp was established, private exploration companies started working towards the creation of a self-sustaining colony. As a chief a astronaut, from one of these enterprises. You want to be a pioneer in developing the biggest, most advanced colony on Mars by achieving both Dome's mission goals as well as your company's private agenda. In the beginning, you are very dependent on supplies from Earth and have to travel a lot between the Mars space station and the surface of the planet. As the colony expands over time, you will construct mines, power generators, water extractors, greenhouses, oxygen condensers, and shelters. The aim is to become a self-sufficient colony independent of any terrestrial organization. This will require careful balancing, carefully balancing the importance of water, air, power, and food, the things we need to survive. Do you dare take part in humankind's biggest challenge? Da, 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 da. All right. So what is it you guys are looking at here? Well, we got a board. We got some cards and we got some other stuff. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. All right, so on the main board here, we have a victory point track round the outside, round the outside, round the outside. At the very top, we have the travel track, okay? This is going to be the order in which we are going to take actions between those four spaces there and those four spaces there. Once the game gets started, the shuttle is going to actually uh, move us or our colonists or our, our workers, if you will, from the orbit side 
to the colony side and vice versa, depending on what direction that the shuttle will be moving as on those tracks there. Now, ultimately, this is kind of a worker placement or action selection game in that for the most part, there are going to be actions available on the orbit side where we're going to get stuff. Okay, whether they are blueprints, whether they are uh, technologies, whether they are resources. Then on the colony side, so we have orbit side here, colony side, we're going to actually go out and do stuff with the things that we have acquired over here in orbit. Then we have the map here. Now the map, it looks like this huge area, but it, actually if you look right there, just a little tiny little zoomed in part, and that is what rep is represented here on the main board. Now on the main board, there are three missions that we're going to have out here. These missions were randomly uh, drawn and then they are associated with certain actions possibly in the game themselves. Then we have the various buildings that come pre-built already. There is one of the five types of buildings already out there. We have mines, then we have I think water generators, batteries, greenhouses, oxygen creating buildings. And then each of us has a shelter that begins with. I obviously am playing yellow. Mr. Lacerda himself is playing purple. All right. So that's kind of what we have here in the middle. Then we have our end game track down here, which is this is the number of uh, missions or completed goals collectively that we have completed. When we have finished all of that, we then go into end game scoring over there. So as I mentioned, we have the available actions for orbit over here. We have the available actions over here for on the colony side. Over here on the left, there we have the various blueprints. Now we're going to be building buildings out here, but then as the game progresses, we're going to be able to acquire these blueprints, which are going to create or be advanced buildings where we're going to be able to place our buildings out here via those blueprints, which we will be acquiring over on the orbit side of the board. Then over here, we have the LSS or the life support system. And these are all of the things that are required for us to be able to maintain life here on Mars. Now, our colony level starts at colony level number one. And as these markers, as we are able to build uh, additional buildings, and so on and so forth, our colony level will increase, which is going to also assist us with the completing of goals. Now, as I mentioned, there are three community goals out here in the game. However, as we get further and further along here, the game is going to kind of push us along. So if we are kind of being a little lackadaisical when it comes to completing those goals, as we increase here, we're going to increase this marker every time that we reach a higher level here so that collectively between that that, that, and these two, there are five possible missions that we're going to able to acquire, or between them, we need to do three of them, which will trigger the end of the game. Then over here, we have scientists and eventually contract cards that will be available for us, and by us, I mean myself and Lacerda, and finally, we have buildings that we're going to be able to be building out here where the starter buildings are already there. Then on our player boards, our player boards have a number of various things, be them additional shelters, our colonists, or possibly another way to think of these is as our workers. We have markers for out here for building advanced buildings on the LSS. We have our warehouse or our uh, resource supply or our resource storage here. Our re number of resources that we are allowed to hold is the number of shelters that we have built. So in this case, at the beginning of the game is one plus one additional, so we can hold two of each of the resources. Over here, we have our technology advancement, as it's kind of a tech tree that will grow from left to right. And then we have our executive actions. If you're familiar with other Lacerda games, whether it's the gallerist, so on and so forth, you may be able to take additional actions via spending these, uh, these gems or these crystals over here. These crystals, 
the available executive actions that we're going to be able to take are going to be any of these actions, provided that we have already unlocked spaces with these uh, new ships here in our hangar. All right, so that's pretty much everything you guys are looking at. Then we have a bunch of resources that are off camera, so on and so forth. And there is the solo deck here. We're not gonna be using this. Instead, we're going to be using an app that somebody has developed. And I will be showing you guys that here in a little bit. All right, so that's everything that you're looking at, but what is it we're actually trying to do? Well, the goal of the game is victory points. We are trying to score more victory points than Lacerda, but there are additional other uh, goals that we have, which I will cover here in a little bit. But the gist, the overview of what it is we're going to be doing is we're going to be acquiring resources, uh, technology, and blueprints to then come over here to build buildings or to build advanced buildings via these blueprints and acquiring the scientists, which will help us for in-game scoring, as well as special executive actions. We will be able to move our uh, rover and our bots out here, which will allow us to build more buildings, which will then increase the level of our colony. And during all of those things, hopefully complete these missions up here as well to advance this to trigger the end of the game to then hopefully beat the bot or the Automa or Lacerda in the game. So big picture, that's kind of what we're doing here. All right. Now I am not going to do a full teach of this game because I've already done one official one of these as is. But what I am going to do is talk about the flow of the game as well as the differences here with Lacerda or with the, the solo game. All right. Now the solo game is essentially a two player game, me versus Lacerda. However, there are, obviously, I'm not controlling Lacerda. There is an Automa or a bot that is going to be controlling Lacerda. So some things that, uh, that are different. He does not have private goals. I have private goals. Now, because he's a bot and he can't see these, you guys can see what my private goals are here as well. All right. Then, pretty much, there is going to be a system in which he is going to take actions and then I will take a normal turn and then he will take his normal turn per the bot rules, so on and so forth. And we will continue alternating in turn order until the end of the game is triggered. And then we will go into end game scoring. Now, the end game scoring, I'm gonna show you guys this, which is going to be a little bit different than your typical scoring. So if we take a look over here, hi everybody. All right, ah, I didn't take that down. Hold on a moment. Ah, hold on, there we go, that's better. So if we take a look here, these are the various goals, okay? Right here. Now, I'm going to see this as a successful game and that is blurry as all get out. Let's try that. It's at a different height. Ah, you know what? We got a fix for this. Let's take a look. Let's just zoom in on this right here. All right. In fact, let's zoom in a little bit more. So a successful game, as far as I'm concerned, is going to be level two. All right. So level two says I need to reach, or the colony needs to reach uh, colony level three. I need to complete at least two contracts, one of each type. I need to complete one private goal. I need to have at least two research tiles, four shelters built, and beat Lacerda by at least 10 points. This is what I will consider redemption. However, a win would be hunky-dory. Colony level four, complete at least two contracts, one of each type, complete a private goal, have colonists and or advanced building markers on at least three mines, have five advanced buildings, and beat Lacerda by 20 points. All right, so that is ultimately what the goal is for the game. Someone asked, what is it I screwed up last time in the last game? And why am I redoing this one? 
Anytime Lacerda comes over to the uh, orbit side, I'm sorry, the colony side, automatically builds a building, no matter what. I wasn't doing that every time. And number two, he never pulls his workers back. That's going to be a really big thing. Uh, oh, somebody asked, am I playing with the new version of the app? I'm playing with the same version of the app that I knew about the last time I streamed this a couple weeks ago. So if that is not the new version, then the answer is no. I'm playing with the one that I am aware of. How's that? All right. So without further ado, let's bring up the cameras. Bring up the cameras over on the PTZ as well, which it was working flawlessly earlier, and now the software decided it won't. Frustrating. All right. So, VTOL said should take 90 minutes to play a solo game of this. So, with at an hour for streaming, two and a half hours. That's our goal. Over under on Glory to Rome's. Four and a half. Okay. And on top of that, me, place your bets. Is this going to be... Redemption, a win, or Lacerda. Those are your three options for choosing the, uh, the end game, or, you know, who you're betting on, so to speak. All right. And we're off to a good start. Hey, Bob. Cheers, Bob. Thanks for the support. Went to PledgeHC.com. Thanks, Bob. Really appreciate them, huh? All right, let's get into it. Hey, Julian's here. Solo extraordinaire, developer. All right, y'all ready? I'm ready. All right, so the first thing first is we need to determine where Lacerda is going to start and where that is. So what I need you guys to do, the peanut gallery, is you guys are going to choose a number one through six. And that's going to be the tile that he starts with. Okay? So one through six. Pick a number. First uh, number that is mentioned twice is what we will go with. And I'm shuffling these every day. Shuffling. Okay? I like where your head's at, Michael. Potato victory with Lacerda used as fertilizer. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, well, I appreciate it, Bob. Thanks. Really? That's impressive. Two, three, four, five, six. All have been chosen by you guys. That's impressive. I guess you guys are anti one. <laughs> five. Five it is. It's the first one with two. So that is the fifth one down. And he is going to spot number six. So Lacerda is going to come out here, spot number six. And the ship will start over, or the shuttle will start on his side. He gets whatever that is. That is the same as the warehouse over here. Oh, I did not put out two crystals. He will choose whatever has the most of a uh, resource. He does not collect resources. He does, however, collect gems or crystals, sorry. And if tied, always will go left or right with crystals first. So he will take a crystal and that will immediately go into there. Boom. That is his choice. All right. So that literally, that's the whole point of those tiles. Those can now be set aside, never to be heard from again. So where am I going to choose? So I do want to start over on the orbit side because, again, get stuff, then do stuff. So I like the idea of being able to do that. Well, actually, before I start with that, I probably ought to talk about what my goals are and everything else, right? Uh, my private goals. So let's take a look here at my private goals. I need, and these were randomly assigned, so... I need five different technologies, which this does count 
one of my uh, starter shelter one, which is at technology level number two, but I need a total of five tiles. So that's gonna be over in orbit, so that's a good one. I need to have two advanced buildings uh, out there on uh, a group of buildings of three or higher. Okay, so I need two of those. Now remember, I can complete all of these, but I can actually only turn in one of the three private goals. And finally, this is have three mines out there with either a colonist or an advanced building on it. That one seems really hard, okay? All right, so, all right. Um, real quick, Dimitri, I'm curious. The new app version you said, is that the one that I was playing with previously? You tell me. All right, so those are my private goals. So with those being my private goals, I'm going to start over here on the orbit side. But now, let's take a look at what our four options are. And in fact, we'll go ahead and move up to the, let's see, nah, we'll have it right there. I think that works. All right, so up here on the travel, the four spots up there, go first, but nothing. That is get resources or a resource from the warehouse of your choice. Get a research technology or get an additional colonist, but you have to pay a water or a plant. I'll be honest, I think getting the research technology me is probably the, the one that makes, get the new tech makes the most sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and start there, which means now I get, and I will show you guys this. This thing needs to quit messing up on me. There we go. All right. So over here, I get one of the technologies, okay? Now you'll notice that right down here, in fact, I'll just move it down a little, you see that whenever somebody gets a technology, it's going to advance this because that's where C is. So I'm going to go ahead and move this so I don't forget. And I get a crystal for doing that. Take my word for it, I got a crystal. There we go, ready to rock and roll. So now I get to choose one of the available eight. Now what these are going to do is allow for special abilities for advanced buildings to be built or regular buildings to be built, I should say, uh, multiples of them. So mines, plants, uh, oxygen generators, battery, or water. And then this is whenever you welcome a new ship, get an additional colonist. This is build advanced buildings, so be able to build multiple advanced buildings in one action, or move your rover additional spots. Now, I also should point out what the three missions are out here. Well, we already talked about this one, which is going to be taking research technologies, and a two-player means seven of them. This is acquire uh, blueprints. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, hold on. Let me make sure I got that right. That one is, yes, blueprints are, no, wrong one. That is advanced buildings are on the map. So eight advanced buildings must be built there. And this is the, oh, I forget the exact name of the tiles. Let me grab the, uh, the research tiles. So these research tiles out here, being able to acquire a total of five of them collectively between myself and Lacerda. And to be honest with you, I didn't really have a good spot where to put B for that because you're moving your, ro ah, you're moving your rover. So how about we put that bad boy right there? That kind of makes sense. Nice. All right. So those are the missions that are available out there. So now getting back to what do we want to take over here? And I know, let's see, uh, Borgasol says, get yourself the ROV technology. You'll thank yourself later. Um, ah, you know what? Sure, let's go with it. I don't really have a good reason one way or the other, so let's go ahead and do it. But you'll notice that it's going to cost me a battery. So I will take the battery that I have from my player board that gets turned in. I will go ahead and take the rover tech. So now with the rover tech, whenever you take one of the uh, tiles, 
it then must go into the left part of your board. And then if you cover something that has a spot on it, you immediately get whatever it is. This is get a crystal or go into the warehouse and get one thing of your choice. I like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that bad boy right there. So now coming over here, what is it that I want to choose? So in the two player game, only the bottom two rows are ever filled on that. So, you know, I could take what I just built, uh, or what I just spent, I mean. He is going to go for battery, which requires my serve. Could You know what? I'm actually going to take what I just spent, actually. So I will take that. That will go there, back, and again, I'm allowed two of each because I have one shelter plus one out there. So there we go. We are now ready to begin, and we're, well, ready to begin. Well, hold on. Before we begin, apparently, it's a good problem to have, right? This thing's cooperating today, isn't it? What do we got? Richard, cheers. Thank you for the support. Really appreciate that, man. Thank you. Pledgehc.com. And by the way, I just got an email from Rado. And we're talking about, uh, yeah, we're talking about just working together on stuff. And so I saw that and I was like, oh, another Richard. So, hey, yeah, cool. Thank you. All right. So, we now begin the game. And we go left or right, so as you can see that I am first and then Lacerda is over here, so therefore I am going to go first because we go in numerical order going from the one spot to the eight spot, so there we go. So I take an action. Now, the available actions that I have on my turn, and the first couple of rounds this is going to go slowly as I kind of walk you guys through the possible options here, all right? So there are four available actions to be taken over here. Okay, technically there are five. Nobody uses that unless you're desperate, which is uh, travel on the ship off time. We're gonna skip that one for right now. The first one we'll talk about is taking a tile. So anytime you see this little blue colonist, that means you can spend additional colonists, and by additional colonists, I mean the colonists that are available here in your base shelter, as well as as you build shelters in these spaces, you can spend them into the working area here to be able to then be able to take additional actions, meaning boost this so these i could take one of these and then i could spend a colonist and then take another spend another colonist take another but again these being free this requires one battery this requires one battery or one of any other resource for any of those and those were randomly put out there okay but keep in mind that whenever you do that that because this is C, we're then going to get a extra crystal and work towards a mission on this. So that, and that is also going to be one of the end game goals that we are trying to get to, because remember, we need a total of two of those tiles. Oh wait, I already have two. So keep that in mind. So there's nice, that's nice. This next spot down here is to be able to advance your technologies further along the track. Now, anytime you see a red colonist here, that means you must take one of your colonists from your available space, again, from here or, or anywhere up there. And if so, you must place it out here. Now, with it being a two-player game, you must place one here for each other colonist that is going to be out here. So if there was already one out here, I would actually require two to be placed out there, so on and so forth. Again, it is boostable. And then what you can do is you can advance your technologies over here on the track. However, as always, you're gonna have to pay for that. To pay for that, you have to move it, you can slide it up, or if it's not blocked, you can move it into a, another space. Spend any one resource of your choice, Spend an oxygen, an oxygen, an oxygen, any of your choice, an oxygen, or a crystal. 
And again, whenever you cover something, you then get whatever the bonus is, and then it will be worth some number of victory points at the end of the game. So that's everything that you can do as far as advancing your technologies. Now, with advancing your technologies, you're going to notice that it says that you can do two. Every time you boost it, you get an additional one. So keep that in mind. All right. The warehouse, boostable, take one thing. Pretty simple on that. The last one that we need to go over then are taking blueprints. And taking blueprints, again, you'll notice the red worker and it's boostable, so you will have to place a worker out there for that. And then that brings us to the blueprints that are over here. Now, the blueprints are what's going to allow us to build advanced buildings. And honestly, anything past that, I think I'm going to explain once I actually do that. So let's get back to what we're trying to do here. Oh, so I have two actions before the ship travels back. I do like the idea of being able to build additional uh, advanced buildings all in one turn. I also need blueprints, though. So I think we're going to go with blueprints. Uh, so I'm going to take this action here. So let's take a look. It requires a worker or a colonist. So I'm going to take one of my colonists. I'm going to place it up here. It doesn't matter which spot there. I could boost it, which I may. I will think about that in a little bit. But as it is, I think what we're going to do a moment. I'm looking. I think that's what I'm going to do there, which will score those. I think I'm going to choose this blueprint right here, okay? So let's go ahead, now that I've actually taken a blueprint, let's go ahead and show you guys the blueprints here. All right, so this is a blueprint, okay? Whenever you take a blueprint, you immediately get the resource that is shown at the bottom of the card. So in this case, it is a mineral, which is actually a wild resource. It's a wild and crazy resource. So we're going to put a second one there, which I am now capped at, because remember, I have one shelter and I'm allowed plus one. So that's a total of two of each of the resources. All right, so that's done. Then I need to put an advanced building on this to show that the special ability or the executive action that is available on this is not available until that advanced building is built. To be able to uh, build that advanced building, I'm going to have to do a number of things. I need to come over to this space, build an advanced building, and then I'll go over the details a little bit later on that. But once that's out here on the board, this now becomes an executive action for me to spend two crystals to be able to take that as my executive action, which executive actions you can take before or after your main action. Or anybody that has that scientist can place them on this card and now it's free for me and whoever owns that scientist, be it me or Lacerda, to take that action as an executive action. Now, should point out Lacerda doesn't take executive actions, but it'd be free for me. So there's that. All right, so as it is, I took the resource. I'm going to then put this card over here to show that at the end of the game, also, it's going to be worth either plus three or minus three victory points, plus three if I built it, minus three if I have not. So that is that action. But I think I will go ahead and boost it because, again, it's all about efficiency of actions, right? So now I can go ahead and take a second blueprint. So now looking at that, there is another mineral blueprint out here, which is going to be good for end game scoring if I get the scientist that has that blueprint associated with it. And you know what? Let's go ahead. I think we're going to stay on target for this. So I will, again, do the exact same thing. So I'm going to take that blueprint. I'm going to put an advanced building on that. I'm going to take another. Oh, wait. Oh, there's that. Maybe I don't. 
because I will forfeit that because I already have two of them. So, instead, I think we will go, there are no shelter ones, unfortunately. I would have if there was a shelter one. Um, ah, moment. Well, the question is then, do I want to, you know what? Maybe I don't boost it. Maybe I just take the one. So now the question is, do I want to take an executive action? So let's take a look at the executive actions, okay? So I have three executive actions available to me. You'll notice that it requires two crystals there, two crystals there, two crystals or scientists to be able to do an executive action on an advanced building, but I obviously can't do that because I haven't built any. Okay, so my two options are I could move my bot to spaces out there, I don't think I need to do that. And this is spend two crystals to then be able to take any one resource that is out here. I mean, I could. I'm trying to figure out if there is a good reason for me to do that. You know, I'm going to actually go ahead and take either a water or a plant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend these two crystals to take my executive action. And then I'm going to come out here and I think I will go ahead. I will take a water and I will add that to my tableau. Boom, done. That is the end of my turn there. All right. Wow, you guys are crushing it today, aren't you? All right, well, it's gonna slow down the game. I'm okay with that. Paul, thank you for the support. Cheers, thank you. Pledge, hc.com, really appreciate that. All right, so now Lacerda takes his turn. All right, so now, Allow me to introduce you to the app, all right? So, welcome to the app. All right, so I don't know, did, did Dimitri ever tell me whether or not this is the newest version of said app or not? You were playing the one you have the, okay, so apparently it's been updated since this, but you know what? I'm okay with that. It worked really well. So we're going to use this. So this essentially is replacing these cards and has a lot more information, some randomizer on there, so on and so forth. Okay. So as you can see, there's kind of a little tutorial there as to the different information on there, but we're going to go ahead and click it first and turn one. Here we go. So you'll notice the X at the top. So he is not going to contribute this round to any of the three uh, actions out there, meaning the uh, missions out there. So he's not contributing to any of those. Okay. All right. Then he is going to take action number one, which you can see the one on the Martian himself, on the astronaut, if you will, the Martianot, whatever, go with it. So it's going to be action number one. I'll go over, the, go over that here in a little bit. You'll also notice down by his left leg, a little arrow pointing to the right. Now that arrow means he's going to travel if the shuttle travels this turn. So the tra shuttle will travel. So at the end of this, he is going to travel. So we'll cover that here in a little bit. Then you'll notice some colored hexes up there in the top right hand corner of the, uh, of the grid. I may not use these exactly how they were supposed to be used, but essentially what they are there for is to help with randomizing. As long as you do it consistently the same way, it's still random, so it still works out. So I'll, I'll explain how I'm going to use that as the actions come about. And then if I ever need to pick a number, we have the randomizer down in the bottom left-hand corner as well. 
All right, so he is going to take action number one, as you can see there, over on the colony side because he is on the colony side. Action number one is construct a building. All right, so we're going to build the building corresponding to the icon where Lacerda's bot is. All right, so what does all that mean? Well, we take a look down here in the bottom right-hand right -hand corner in the LSS area. His bot starts over here on the mine. So wherever, uh, wherever the bot is, he will build a building if possible. Now, when I say if possible, what that means is whatever the bot is on, if it's on any of these four spaces here and it is below the current colony level here, then he will automatically build it. If this were already there and this were here, that is already at or higher than the current colony level, so he will not build that building. Instead, this would advance and then check this one and then he would build that, so on and so forth. And then, when you get to the end, if he can't build that, it will then reset back to the mine and will always build a mine if at all possible. So, looks like he's gonna build a mine, all right? So, he always tries to build the largest complex possible using available tech, okay? What does that mean? Well, building the largest possible complex. Well, you'll notice where I'm pointing here is the mine tech to be able to build a complex. The difference between a building and a complex is the difference between the number one and any other number. If you can only build a building, a level one building, then they must be individual buildings out here on the board. All right, so what I mean by that is if you take a look, this is a single level one mine. This is a single level one green building, plant building, whatever you want to call it. I forget the exact term. The point is, this is a level one building because it's only one building by itself. To build a complex, meaning a building of two or higher, then this must be available on one of our player tableaus. But since this is not, he must build a level one building. He cannot build a complex. All right, so what does that mean? Well, we're going to take a look over here at the available buildings now, okay? So the available buildings, as you can see, for the various types of buildings that are going to be built. You're gonna take the top one as shown there, okay? I'm getting ahead of myself. First things first, Lacerda is going to take one of his workers because there is a red here and he will place it onto a spot. And now he will take the top building of that type out here. All right. So now where are we going to place it? Well, Lacerda, it is implied that his bot is out here on the board but we need to actually take a look at where this says. So if you notice where that dark hex is in relation to the rest of the board, that dark hex is where I'm pointing at right here, okay? So it needs to be exactly two away from a current mine building. So the closest to this space available is going to be this area right there. So he's going to build a mine right there. Now you'll notice that this has crystals pointing to it. So we are going to put crystals as long as those spots are devoid of any other thing out there on the board. All right, so we have done that. So now we're going to flip this over and hey, there is now a mine out there. So a moment. All right, so building a building. Yeah, hold on. Make sure I'm not forgetting anything on the steps. Choose a building, pay the cost, right? Lacerda always has implied wor uh, unlimited workers and unlimited resources. Builds the building. Two spaces away. Place crystals. Gain resources equal to the new size. Well, that is a size one building. Now, he would normally gain one, uh, one uh, mineral, 
but he doesn't care about resources, so we're not going to bother with that. Place a progress cube. If it was a complex, what that means is if this was a complex of level two or higher, he would place one of his progress cubes, progress cubes being these cubes down here, which are going to help for scoring out there. But as it is, it's only a level one building, so he doesn't place a progress cube out there. Adjust the LSS. It is not one of the four buildings that are required to sustain life on Mars, so therefore he will not place that out there. Uh, it won't bump any of those, in other words. Uh, and if you constructed a mine, place a colonist from it from your living quarters. Well, again, he has unlimited colonists, so he's just going to place one on there right there. Then we have to move the bot one space to the right, like so. Done, okay? So there it is, that was his action. Any questions on that? Hopefully not, hopefully all that made sense. So, all right. Rocking and rolling, all right. So now we have both taken our actions. So now the ship will travel, okay? Have travel or have ship will travel. Now, as we mentioned earlier on the app, you'll see that he has a arrow down by his left leg, which means he will travel. So in other words, he's going to travel with the ship. Now, because our colony level is level one, the ship will travel to the first space. Now. Lacerda skips both of these actions and then will come out onto one of the available spaces. You might be asking yourself, self, which of the available spaces will he choose? Well, if we take a look, if we hit the button again, oh, hey, look at that. The top row that just showed up, he will take that. If that one is taken, he will take the next level one. But as it is, it says he will take the last spot of all of those. All right, so we take a look at the travel section up here, and the travel section says he will take the last spot, and he will gain a colonist. He doesn't care about that because he has unlimited colonists, so never mind, don't worry about that. Boom, done, and done. Now, I did not travel because I was already in orbit and the shuttle was traveling from the colony to orbit, thus we are done. All right, a moment. Some London fog. So now we again go left to right. So it's my action. Okay. Ah. Uh... Hmm. So let's see, what do we want? Resources are good. Advancing tech is good, and getting these are good. Now, to be able to get the level three, nope, I actually don't even need any more resource tiles. Okay, nice. So I don't need resource tiles, I just want resource tiles. But resources are always nice. Hmm. But if I advance this, that helps that, plus I get more crystals. Uh, I also would get a crystal. Yeah, what do we do, what do we do, what do we do? I don't want more blueprints right now. I think getting resources makes the most sense. So I'm going to take the get resource actions here the warehouse, and I think I will boost it as well. So I will take two resources, I think. So I'm spending that. I am going to take an oxygen, and it's either going to be a battery or a plant. If I take a battery that gives me water, I like that. You know what? I'm not going to boost it. Check that. Again, 
not boosting it. So I'm done. I cannot take any executive actions because I did not, uh, I don't have any crystals in which to spend. And because I took this action, it did not apply to any of those. The turn of the yellow player is complete. All right. Oh, 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 hold on. Good call. Let me check that. Uh, I'm checking for Rover moving, so hold on. You're right. If Lacerda cannot perform the action selected, then Lacerda, then move Lacerda's Rover instead. Uh, fair point. So move the Rover two hexes towards the closest research or discovery tile that Lacerda can collect. All right. Good call, guys. Way to go, Peanut Gallery. Uh, so, real quick. So, moving back, then, with this action here, he's going to move his rover. And this is now a new turn. This is still at the end of first turn. So, I would say that he moves it towards that dark hex right there. All right? So, moving it towards that hex. And it's going to move two spaces towards this hex right there. So, cannot. So, he will go one here to pick that up, and since he cannot move there, he will move up the closest up there. So, he will take the crystal, and that will go onto his space there. Good call, peanut gallery. All right. I will not get my dudes back until I travel back to orbit. So if I boost, oh, actually I will, won't I? Never mind. You guys are right. You guys are so smart. So my action here taking this is I might as well boost it because these guys are going to come back. You guys are 100% right. So I will take the two available resources that I have room for. You're right. Good call. All right. Good. So that is my action. So now Lacerda will take his next action. So we need to change the card. Again, it's an X, so he's not going to advance any of the special uh, uh, the missions. He will take action number two in orbit, which is learn new technology. All right. So learn new technology says Lacerda takes the cheapest technology if Tide take the less mo leftmost tech and uh, place it in Lacerda's laboratory on the top space first, and you take any benefit. So the leftmost of the cheapest here, that. So he will take this, then over here on his board, it will go onto the topmost space. So he will get something there in the warehouse, and there in the warehouse, he will always take whatever there is the most of. There's one of each, so he will go left to right, which means he will take this crystal there. And that is his action. All right. However, we have some other things to think about. He did do this. So therefore, we're going to advance that, which means he's going to get another crystal. Now, those extra crystals that he's taking right now, there, down at the bottom, he still abides by the number uh, play or the capacity rules. He has room for three, four, five, six, seven, eight as these get empty. But they are not empty, so he's actually going to lose these at the end of his turn. Good. Done. All right. Oh, that is a good call. Shoot, I forgot that as well. Let's back up. With the rover movement, he has three crystals. He will go one, two, and then three. He will take that. I forgot. He will boost his for using crystals to movement for movement. So he won't actually waste those crystals that he just acquired from that stuff 
because he will have spent it for these. Ah, my bad. This is why the peanut gallery is here. So this says he advances his technologies. So always advance the technology that is furthest up if possible and then the lowest one if possible, which technically he won't have had this yet. So he will advance this two steps. And when you advance that two steps, whichever helps him more, which would be technically this, which is moving his bot, and then one other space right there that won't have existed yet. So there's that. And it does not cost him to be able to do that because of acquiring this tile. And whenever he moves his bot, the bot will then move. Let me check a moment. Double checking. Ah, come on, where is it? Move it to the next icon on the, on the space. Okay, so it's just standard move his bot. So it's gonna move two spots, so that's going to move there. In addition to that, thank you for pointing this out because I have the rover movement. He will use that to have not spent one of his crystals. When he uses another player's technology, i.e. mine, I will get an oxygen. When he's done with his action, I then can either keep this oxygen or I can spend it to advance the technology that he just used. And I will spend it because I don't have room here to advance that one space. There we go. And... That is move his bot two spaces, so we should move this two spaces to the right. I'm pretty sure. Whew. So the two crystals that he will have gotten, he doesn't waste now. There we go. Done and right. Thank you, Peanut Gallery. See, I'm trying to go too fast. I'm worried. Uh, I keep hearing uh, VTOL in my head 90 minutes. Slow down and just get it right. That's all that matters. So, all right. We are done with our actions. Shuttle travels. It's up to me. Do I wish to travel? I do wish to travel. It always goes left to right. So I'm going to travel. So traveling means we're going to choose one of the research tiles to place out here on the board. Then I will get all of my colonists back from my in work and any colonists I have out here already placed. And then I will choose one of the available actions out there. Well, I will go ahead and place that one, and then you place it three away from where your rover is. Now my rover is technically not out on the board yet, but it's represented to be here in the center space. So three away from that, I'll go ahead and just put that right there. You know what, let's put it further away from his, one, two, three, so we'll go right there. All right. All right. So that is done, then we're going to refill that there. And then I get to choose one of the available actions. Both of my working colonists will come back and I could either take more resources there in the warehouse, do nothing but go first, move my uh, bot to spaces or take a blueprint. And I think Do I take a blueprint? 
The only problem is I'm not gonna, you know what? I, I think I'd, oh. Cause I'm not going to get the bonus for doing that. So I think, I think I'm just gonna go first. So I will go there. That's my choice. All right, so now Lacerda, will he travel? Let's take a look. He has the arrow down by his knee, so yes, he will travel. All right, so now this works a little bit different in that he is going to, when he travels, he's going to take the leftmost discovery tile and place it three spaces away from his rover, as far from my rover as possible. So my rover is here. So three away from his, and it doesn't matter, uh, or it's going to be equidistant no matter how we do that, I think. Or actually, I think three away would be there. So I think he's going to place this three away from me. So one, two, three, four, five. If I put it there, it's one, two, three, four. Yep, there you go. That's going to be the furthest possible space there. We need to then refill that. And then he will choose one of the available spaces. Which space? We'll hit that button again. And it's going to be the third space, which is available. So we go over here, the third space. He will then move his bot two spaces. His bot will move one, two spaces as such. All right. So we are done with that. And then he did travel to the colony side, so therefore he is going to build a building. All right, so let's go back through the building of a building corresponding to where his bot is. Again, his bot is here because it just moved again, so he's going to build a mine. It is a terrible thing to waste. All right, so he is going to again build a mine here going to be a regular mine. It's not a special mine or anything. And it's got to be two away from existing mines. So then we will go to the tiebreaker on this. The tiebreaker this says it's going to be up towards where near where his rover is. And we'll go ahead and show you guys that a little bit more. So it was actually pointing at this spot, so two away from a mine would be here. The closest spot possible will be there. That will flip over. And again, oh, check that. Check that. He does have a technology now. He did get that, so he can build a complex of level two. So I stand corrected. So it's going to be in this location right here. So complex level two. So that's going to go there. So let's run through the steps. He chose a building, and because it covered this, this will be destroyed. He pays the cost, which he doesn't. He builds the building adjacent to a tile of the same type that required tech. Well, okay, he will always build the biggest possible. That is plus one, so that is a level two, okay? All right, so then, if the tile has arrows, place crystals, there were none. Gain resources, he would gain two minerals, but he doesn't care about resources on that. Place the progress cube, that is, however, a complex. So he will place a progress cube. In which progress cube? He will place the one that represents the minerals right here. So he will then place this out on his color like so. But again, because it doesn't have to do with the LSS, it's not going to bump any of those markers over there. All right. So then, if you constructed a mine, place a colonist on it. All right, so we're going to take a colonist. We're going to put one on there. And he now has a level two complex. Yeah. Easy enough. That makes sense, hopefully. Okay. All that. And by the way, I'm actually going through the various steps right here on the player aid. It's just off camera, all right? Making sure, let's see. Yeah, done. So we have now traveled. So it is now my turn because left to right. So now we're over here on colony side. Now, what do we want to do? 
Level two mines are available, or else I could just build a level one building, which in hindsight, I probably should have gotten one of those. Uh, what do we want to do? To build a building will take both of my colonists out there. To build an advanced building on a mine, Hmm. Oh, thank you. And move his bot. Thank you. Oh, uh, what do we want to do? What do we want to do? So our options are build a building, build an advanced building, claim a colonist, or I'm sorry, claim a scientist, move our rover and our bots, uh, and welcome a new ship. Welcoming a new ship requires a plant and a water. What if we welcome two ships? Hmm. I mean, it seems a little early for that, but that's going to help for this, but he's going to potentially build that right now. Uh, I don't know what he's going to do. But if we welcome a ship, I could build that building, but again, ah. I could make a case for either building a water building. Unfortunately, we won't be able to place a uh, complex cube here because we can only do a level one, all right? Um, oh, I actually can only welcome one ship. That's right, because our uh, LSS is level one and that limits the number of ships that you can actually have in your hangar. I forgot about that, so I'd only be able to welcome one ship. Ah. Ah. I could build a water building. I think building the water building actually makes, makes a lot of sense here. And I can, I can build it right there. From where it must be built either where your bot is, which is not possible, or in an adjacent area around it of any of the surrounding six hexes. And with that said, it must be two away because it's not going to be a complex, which means specifically I have to build it right there. Um, I also could build this advanced building, which allows me then to build an advanced building as a special ability. I could also get the scientist that's going to score me more points for that. Um, man, I mean, there are three valid actions there, right? <sighs> points are good though, but I'm not gonna be able to do the advanced. So how about I build the advanced building? Want to check one thing real quick? Or upgrade a building, if you will. Yeah. So I think actually, or build a building that has a blueprint waiting on in the market. Yeah. I mean, There are a lot of things that I want to do right now, right? I just covered. There are three options right there. I only have two workers. So welcoming a ship maybe might not be a terrible idea. Screw it. Let's welcome a ship. Final answer. So we're going to welcome a ship. To welcome a ship, it requires a couple of resources. To welcome a ship requires a plant and a water, as you can see right here on my player board. So I'm going to spend a water and a plant, and I'm going to welcome a ship. I can choose any of the five. It does not have to go bottom to top, top to bottom, any of those. Um, so again, looking for the end of the game stuff, building shelters, contracts. Ah. 
taking blueprints is going to be nice. And a moment, I'm just looking. And building advanced buildings is going to be nice. So I'm leaning towards both the, one of those two, I think. I think I will go ahead and build the, that's taking a blueprint, I apologize. That might not be a bad idea, short term and long term. So yeah, let's go ahead and take that. So I'm going to place my, hang, my ship in the hangar here. Now I choose either two more colonists or colonists and a bot. I'm going to choose two more colonists. And as long as they have room. I need to build more shelters to be able to have more room, okay? So, obviously that's going to be a plan here shortly as well. All right, so that is my action. I have welcomed a ship, I am done, okay. All right, so that is my action. It did not have to do with any of the special abilities out here, so now it's Lacerda's turn, okay? So Lacerda will come over here and new action, so action number one he is going to do. Action number one is construct a building. All right, so let's get back out here. So what is he going to construct? He's going to construct a battery building, and if you notice, nobody has the battery building uh, technology, so therefore it's going to be a level one battery building. Here is the battery building there. So we know it's going to be a battery building. So we're going to head over here and grab said battery building. Then where are we going to build it is the question. And that's going to come into play with this. And do left, the far left, kind of a little bit below center, the dark X there. So if we take a look there, so the battery building here, a little bit below center, so it's going to be two away. It's going to go into that location right there. We're going to put out some crystals. There we go. That's going to flip over. Make sure we're not forgetting a step. Da, 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 da. Two away, put that. He doesn't gain resources. Place a progress cube if required. It's not because it's a level one building, however. He did help out with the LSS out here, okay? He built a, oh, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, every time you build a building, not just a complex. Complex, complex has to do with these, buildings is those. So just checking out. So he is going to gain two points for that. Then he will score two points for each ship that he has welcomed. He has welcomed exactly zero ships. So that means he's going to gain two points there. Then in addition to that, he's going to choose one of those options. So now, uh, I need to double check which one he's going to choose. Does anybody remember which that is with the LSS? I cannot remember what that is. So if you guys can help me remember that, I would appreciate it. And then this will advance to that space over there. Retrieve a scientist or take a crystal. That's right. He does not have a scientist to retrieve, so therefore he will take a crystal there. And that is it. Thank you, Robert. All right, so this crystal he doesn't have room for that goes away. 
I should point out also, I have an extra spot for a crystal as well. Yes, Robert, you are 100% right. Yep. So that is his action. By the way, forgot to move the ship. Oops. There we go. All right. So we are done with our actions. So now, do I wish to travel because I'm going first? The answer is no, I do not wish to travel. Does Lacerda wish to travel? See the little arrow? The arrow says yes, he does wish to travel. So he's going to. Where is he going to go? The last spot on the top row there. So, all right, let's dig, get into it, shall we? So he is going to travel. We skip both of those. He will go to the last spot. And again, if that cannot happen, again, the colony is level one, so that will go to the that spot. If he cannot take the action, he will move his rover instead, and it will move two hexes towards the closest research or discovery tile that he can collect. All right, so now let's go ahead and look at this a little bit more. Here is his rover. He already has this. He got the B, so he cannot take that one as well. Now, he does not care about resources, so he's not going to try and collect this one. He does care about this one. However, the closest, I would argue, is going to be that. That is going to be the closest tile that he can go to. So it's going to move two spots and it's boostable. Because I have the technology, because I have the technology here, I'm going to get an oxygen. So he's actually going to be able to move two additional spaces. And in fact, I will show you this. All right. So that's going to be two additional spaces plus the two. So I'm getting the oxygen potentially for that, okay? So we take a look here at the map. So he's gonna move four spaces. One, two, three, four. It's boostable for crystals. So he's going to spend two of the crystals over here to then be able to go one, two and claim this. So now we come over back to his board and again, for free, it's going to take the highest most and lowest most and move it one. And when in doubt, he's going to choose one of these and it's going to be common sense where it comes into play. He's going to take a blueprint. He's not gonna build uh, an advanced building because he doesn't have a blueprint. So he's going to take a, that and then he's going to move this there. There we go. All right, so now he's going to take a blueprint. Now the order of operation for him taking a blueprint is scores the most points for his scientists. He has no scientists. If tied, take the less most card uh, from the row with the most cards in it. They all have one, so he's gonna take left most card. Let's take a look. Blueprint, left most card. He's gonna take this one. All right, so now coming back to Lacerda's Tableau. He does not care about the resource, but he is going to place an advanced building on there and boom, done. So his stuff is now done. Now we need to come over to my board. Now my board, he used my rover tech. I could keep this oxygen, but again, I'm limited. So I'm not gonna, I'm gonna toss the oxygen and I can advance this one space. I literally can only advance this one area, which is going to be to this, to give me a mineral. Ah, damn, I already have two minerals. Alas, we are not taking any minerals, but hey, it's gonna be worth an extra point and now the rover is going to move further, whether it's for yours truly or that Yahoo. So there we go, he's done traveling. You guys, that all makes sense? All right. All right, next turn. He goes first because he is in uh, the leftmost space, as you guys can see up here on the travel spot. So Lacerda will go first, then I will go. All right, so what's he going to do? All right, it's a new round. He is not going to take any of the mission stuff. And by the way, that doesn't happen until like 12 or 13 or so. So we're gonna just forego talking about that for a little bit. But he's gonna take action number one. Action number one, obtain a blueprint. All right. So let's take a look. So 
Action number one says he's going to take a blueprint. Now, you'll notice that he has a worker there, or I have a worker there. So he's going to have to place one of his workers out there, and it's going to cost him one additional. The one additional is always going to be a crystal. Ah, uh, hold on one second. You know what? Let me make sure I'm getting that right. He always has to place a colonist on actions that depict a red colonist. He pays the additional cost with crystals. He cannot pay with colonists. If he doesn't have enough crystals to pay or some of the move he is doing is not allowed, um, for some reason, instead of performing the action, he moves his rover instead. There we go. So he will pay the crystal. He has it. So now he's going to take a blueprint. And again, which blueprint is he going to take? Whatever there help scores him the most points, but again, he doesn't have a scientist, so whichever column has the most, well, there's only one of each, so he's going to take that one there. That one there, again, he doesn't care about the bottom of it. He's going to place that, and he has taken a, or a uh, blueprint, and the turn of the Lacerda player is done. So now it's yours truly's turn. All right. Well, I want to build. I need to build because I need to have space for my colonists. Because right now, I need, need shelters. So let's take a look at my board real quick so we can go over this a little bit. My building shelters is currently at a level three or at level two, which is, <laughs> excuse me. It is plus two, meaning a level three shelter. I only need a level two because there's only one out there. So good to go, I can build a complex. Now that's not going to help me with out there with the LSS, but I need to be able to do it. You'll notice that it's going to cost an oxygen. So before we get too carried away with this, let's take a look, colonist actions. So over here, I want to build a building, okay? You'll notice that my opponent, woo, we went a little crazy there. My opponent already has a colonist there. So it's going to cost me two colonists to be able to do that. So unlike Lacerda who pays with crystals, I will be doing that and that. Uh, sorry, or does that go into my work area? Goo. A moment. Yeah, it goes into my work area. I stand corrected. That comes back. And the extra cost will go there. All right, so now I have paid what I need to do to build a building. And we've talked about I want to build that building. So it's going to cost me an oxygen. So I will pay my oxygen here, there. And you always build lowest to highest in this case, all right? So this is going to come out here and I am allowed to build a complex of up to three here. All right. So my row or my bot is here so I can build adjacent so I can build in any of those four locations. We talked about the water thing. I think I'm going to leave a little room for that. So let's go ahead and build that bad boy right here. All right, so I built a building, I paid the cost. It is adjacent, so that is a level two complex now. And I gained the resources. You'll notice that these, I suppose I ought to show you guys this a little bit better. Allergies are kicking today. Two crystals. So those will go to the bottom of my board down here. All right, so I built those. No progress cube, unfortunately, because again, doesn't help with the LSS or anything like that out there. Uh, done. But now, if you notice, I now have room for two more colonists. So, yay, that's good, okay? Cool, all right, so I have built a building, done. Now do I want to take an executive action?
No. All right, so now I take these two, they will move up there, and I am done. So now, shuttle moves. Is Lacerda going to travel? The answer is no. Notice no, no arrow by the knee. Took an arrow to the knee, a little Skyrim reference. <laughs> anyway, all right, so he's not traveling, but the shuttle is. All right, so if he's not traveling, but the shuttle is, well, let's go ahead and move the shuttle. We're still at a level one, boom, done. He didn't travel, I couldn't travel. All right, new turn. Lacerda's turn. Turn five, round five. Okay. So he is doing action numero three O, which is going to be R and D. All right. So R and D says Lacerda develops the most developed uh, again. Okay. So his most and least developed tech. So let's take a look at his board. Okay. Oh. Back up. He's doing this. By the way, didn't he do this earlier? He did, didn't he? He did that last turn. He should have had that there. That should have been there already. I apologize. So now, he says he's doing action number three. Any time in a two-player game, which this is a two-player game, he has unlimited workers or uh, colonists. So he needs to place a colonist here. But because there is already a colonist, regardless of the color, he must pay an additional crystal, or in my case, a colonist, but in his case, a crystal. Sir does not have any crystals. So you know what he's not going to do? He's not going to do this action because I forgot to put a worker out here last time. Okay. Um, so that means he's going to, anytime he cannot do that, he's going to move his rover instead. Oh, did he only, oh, he, ah, check that. Check that. Thank you. He advanced it with this. And with this, so he didn't take that action yet. I lied. I'm just talking out my ass, apparently. So now his action is he's going to put that out there. Ha. Hmm. <clears throat> my bad. Yep, thanks. All right. So now he's going to advance these. But he does have to pay, but again, he doesn't have to pay. So that's going to advance all the way to max. Congrats. Hmm. And now... He doesn't care about resources, so he's going to advance his rover, sorry, his bot, two spots. There. So now, we come back over here, one, two. That's going to advance two there. Thank you. No, you guys, you guys were right. Brian was right. And Martha says, Arrow to the Knee is way older than Skyrim. It was at least in Gothic 2, probably in Earth. I, I didn't, okay, that's what I know it from, Martha. How's that? Okay, Skyrim. I was just proud of the Skyrim reference. By the way, Witcher 3, I'm like 18, 19 hours into it. I think I just hit level 6 or 7. I just went through my first dungeon. That it, The dungeon took 3 hours. I'm methodical, okay? All right, don't judge. I'm loving it, though. The story's fantastic. Ah, all right. That was Lacerda's action. He's done. I'm up. Well, what do we want to do? Build that as an advanced building. That's tasty. Get a scientist. That's tasty. Move my rover. I mean, hell, my rover can move five spots. I could move my rover, pick that up, which is going to advance that, which is going to get me a crystal, and I can build a battery building. I'm just saying... Can't welcome a new ship. Ah! Uh, what the hell do I want to do, people? 
I want to be able to build complexes, damn it. Um, okay, not a battery because of that, right? So maybe any of those. Those all make sense. So what makes sense? I think this one. I think I go back to the water one that makes a lot of sense for me. All right. Um, I have two, three. Yeah, you know what? That's what we're going to do. Oh, God. That's going to take a lot of, well, I'm about to travel back. Oop. He didn't travel, but the ship did. So we forgot to move that. So I am not traveling this turn. No, wait, I did move that, didn't I? Because he did not travel. Am I right? Shoot, help me out. Oh, you know what? What round are we in? I can figure this out. This is round action number five. It started here. So that was one, two, three, four. Nope, it's in the right spot, so I am traveling. Okay, there we go. Give me just a second, guys. I mean, I'm giving up three points if I choose this one right now. I mean, a scientist also makes sense. I mean, I, I, I can make a lot of cases for a lot of actions, but I think I do... If I build the building, though, it's going to cost me both of my workers. No. Hell, it's going to cost me th three. I can't even do that. I can't build a building. Because it costs me one to go out there and then two more, and I only have two available. Oh, or a crystal. Okay, so I can build it. Check that. Uh, I, like, I like the case for the scientist before he grabs it. That's a good call. So we're going to go ahead and get a scientist. I was going to say build a scientist, but, you know, whatever. You get the idea. So scientists. So I'm going to choose one of the scientist cards. So which one? Go ahead. Choose the one that uh, scores mines. Three points for every advanced building on a mine. So we're going to choose that one. So it requires two oxygen. I don't have two oxygen. I have one oxygen. So I'm going to spend one oxygen. And then I'm going to spend one of the wilds, which is a mineral. Now I have two oxygen. So now I'm going to take this card. I'm going to put it over here in my tableau. And he's going to hang out. And wait, he can only go onto shelter uh, special, or uh, advanced buildings, but he's going to score me points at the end of the game. But now, but wait, there's more. So now, I chose these two colors over here that are available because I played with the other ones in the aborted uh, playthrough. So I can choose any of these to go out there to... Uh, to replace it with. If you choose one of these contracts, nine points if you succeed, four if you do not by the end of the game. These, however, are 12 points if you succeed, six if you don't. And again, looking at the next generation, I need to have one of each type, or in Hunky Dory, which is level three to win, I need one of each type. Okay, so what one do we think we can do? So this is just have the number of resources, not spend them. Just have it. I'm fairly certain. I want to make sure I'm not lying to you people now. Place items of the dead. Okay, so technically, I guess, uh, yeah, you are spending them onto the card. But once it's on there, they're there for the rest of the game. But you've at least reached that. 
Ah. Oof. Okay. So complex of four with an advanced building. A complex of three with two different types. Hmm. Okay. I mean, I'm already halfway to that one, right? I think we choose that one because I'm going to want all four of them out there. So that makes sense. So let's choose that one, shall we? So now this will go out. It will cover the bottom space. And now to claim it, it will cost a cristal. There we go. All right. And these don't get shuffled because, well, you get to choose. Now, the, when Lacerda chooses, it's going to be random, but I get to choose. But there you go. All right. Cool. All right. That was my action. We are done. So now is Lacerda traveling. Lacerda is going not traveling because the ship is going the wrong way. So am I traveling? Hmm. Am I traveling? If I don't travel, I could do the advanced building. But I'm only going to have one worker available over there. Two workers. Yeah, I think I won't travel. Because I want to build this first. Because no one's built that, which allows for a second. And then once that's built, that gives me an extra ability action to be able to build more advanced buildings. Yep, I'm going to not travel. Ain't nobody traveling. So Lacerda goes first for the next turn. Round six. One, two, three, four, five. Going into round six. Yeah, I'm right. Okay. So he's going to take action one. And action one is obtain a blueprint. He ain't doing this one. All right. So let's take a look. Why is he not doing this? He has unlimited workers. It requires him to place a worker and requires two more cristals. Mr. Lacerda has no cristals. So instead, he's going to move his rover. Two hexes towards the closest research, da 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 we know the deal. Okay, well, he can move it five because of my technology over here, which means I'm gonna get an oxygen. So now he's moving five. He does care about this one. The nearest, it says, right? Closest, so, that he can collect. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So he's going to move towards that, I would argue. So what direction is he going to move? Uh, more towards the right, it looks like, I would say, per the hexes there. So he can move five spaces, two for his base, Three, four, so two for the base, three for the bonus here, and he has no crystals, so he's moving five spaces, okay? So five, I would say he moves closer to this, so one, two, he takes that, three, four, five. Now, you'll notice that he ran over this, which means he gets it, but it goes down here. He cannot spend it this turn, so therefore he cannot claim that tile, okay? Uh, Michael, to answer your question, doesn't Lacerda have, Lacerda, sorry, have unlimited workers? He does. What would stop him from spending workers to take a blueprint? So let's go back to this, and I will explain that because this is an important thing for the solo game. He would place a worker out here, theoretically. Then he must spend one, two, but Lacerda doesn't spend workers for that. I, as the human, can spend either workers or crystals. Lacerda is only allowed to spend crystals. Okay, so he cannot. So he would need two crystals 
to take that action. And if we take a look at his board, he didn't have any crystals, so therefore he cannot take the action. He just claimed that for moving his rover out here, there, and he's done. Does that make sense? Any questions on that? Oh, man. Give me a moment, guys. All right. So he's done. My turn. I had a plan. We're going to go ahead and build an advanced building. Okay? So, building an advanced building. So, let's go take a look at that. So that's going to be up her. It's going to take a worker because no one's gone there. Beep. Notice, not boostable. However, if somebody has that technology, you can build multiple advanced buildings if possible, if you have all the criteria. Okay. So choose a blueprint. That one. Uh, pay one mineral. Done. Move advanced building from the marker. From the card to the tile, displace any bot, rover, or colonist. Okay, so choose one. Doesn't matter. That one. So he'll come back. And it doesn't matter because Lyserta has an unlimited supply. All right. So now this is available for an executive action to be able to build a advanced building. This is boostable, you'll notice here, with more colonists into the work area that you can see here, okay? And it costs either two crystals or that specific scientist. Not that one, okay? That makes sense? But I do have a couple of crystals over here. So I could do any of these available actions. This one requires three, which is taking a blueprint, so uh, eh, I'm done. However, back up, during Lacerda's rover movement, I could either keep this oxygen, which I don't have any, so that's tempting, or bump this one, display, uh, spending it to advance it a spot. I feel like all I'm doing is helping him by moving that right now, so I will just take the oxygen and say thank you very much. All right, so I am done. I am not doing the executive action. Is he traveling? Arrow to the knee, he is. So, he's got a bunch of steps here. First things first, he's going to place the leftmost tile. So we'll figure out where he's going to go, and he's going to build, but we're going to place the leftmost tile. And just while I'm up, and we'll place that. All right. So, where are we going to place this? Now, the leftmost tile... Three spaces away from his rover and as far away from my rover as possible. So my rover, again, you know what? I'm just going to put it here just to make it easy, okay? Because that's really where it is. So three away, as far away from my rover as possible. That'll be there. Done. I think that's, well, that's not true. That'll be closest as possible to that, but it's got to be furthest away. So I would argue... I would argue, actually, it would go there, because that's equidistant, and that's closer to that. So is that. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there. And that was closest to the, oh, there. And that's only four away. So, yep, it would be that spot. That makes the most sense, okay? All right. So he has placed that. So now we need to figure out where is he going to go. He is going to the last spot as per the top row because the last spot is open. So we will put him in the last spot, but first in our hearts. And he will take a blueprint. Taking a blueprint. Again, he will take the leftmost here. So he'll take that. getting a little crowded over here. I think we can do that. You guys, eh, 
Yeah, I think that works. Eh, that might be better. How about we do this? That'll work. All right, so he doesn't get the, uh, the plant. That'll go on there. Let's keep it consistent. There we go. He got a blueprint. Boom, done. And now he's going to build. What's he going to build? He's going to build an oxygen building. All right. I feel like he is smoking me right now. Anybody else get that impression? Just saying. All right. So, oxygen building. Where is it going to go? Well, does anybody have the oxygen complex? Nope. So, it's going to be a level one. So, a level one means it's got to be two away from this bad boy. So, if it's going to be two away from that, where is it going to go in what direction? And if you look at that, it's going to be due right or due east per the dark hex on that. So, due east, closest spot would be there. That will go there. There were no crystals there. He would get one oxygen on that. Uh, yeah. All right. So now, moving over to the LSS. It's not a complex, so he doesn't get to place a cube out here, but he does get to do this. That's going to be two points for bumping that up. He does not have any of those research tiles or technology, uh, research tiles, right, uh, the square ones. And he hasn't placed the scientist, so he's going to get a crystal in lieu of that. So he will get two points for that there. Two. I'm just double checking this real quick. I did that, didn't I? I did. That advances. I get a crystal for that. That checks out. There's only one building out here. And here, no one has claimed those. We're good to go. Just checking, doing a little upkeep. All right. Uh, so now he will get that crystal back. And he has now traveled. That is done. He traveled, which means Le Ship travels with him. So now, when these two advance, the colony will advance as well. Yeah, he builds a lot, right? All right. Coo, daddy -o, coo. So it's my turn. I ain't got nobody. I got no workers. Hmm. Well. So, let's walk through this. I do have three crystals. But I can't take build a building. Let's try this again. I can't build a building. Requires a worker. I can't do an upgrade. Requires a blueprint and workers. I have neither of those. Can't do a scientist. I've already done that. I can't welcome a ship because the colony is at level one. Uh, I'll choose action number five, please, Bill. And so I can move my bot two spots. I can move my rover a whole lot more than two. How many can we move? You're right. The answer is five. All right. So let's take a look. So I can move my bot two spots if I want. Um, I can move five. And I should point out that it's boostable with crystals. And I have three. You also can take executive actions before you take your action. So, if I had workers, I could take this, which gets me a blueprint over there, using the three crystals. Then if I had workers or colonists, I could then build the advanced building. Or two more crystals. Well, no, I can't. I can't take two executive actions. But you get the idea. As it is. Five, huh? I mean, I could come and get a couple minerals, plus that's going to give me an extra crystal there. I could claim that. Uh, that seems good. And I could get the crystal on the way, right? If I came down here, one, two, three, I could get this one there which gives me two bumps. They're not free, I do want to point out, though. I just think this is just inherently better. 
So I think I will do that with my five. So I will go one, two, Hoover, four, five. So this will come back onto my board there. Then this guy will get me, I'll just set that down here. That will get me two mineral onto my board. I'm allowed a total of three resources each. Why? Because we have an additional shelter out there. So that's good to go. Then I did do this. I claim one of those, so that will bump down, which will get me another Cristal there. So that is moving my rover there. But now I can move my bot if I wish to move my bot, okay? So what am I trying to do? It's a hell of a question, ain't it? I am gonna travel and get some of those tiles next round. I'll be honest, I don't think I want to move him. I'm happy with where it is, honestly, because this gives me option to build a level three potentially here, a level two there, a level three uh, here with my shelter, or a level two with the what? No, I I'm gonna keep him exactly where he is. I think that's good. Uh, yeah, so I think that makes the most sense. So I'm happy with that. I move my rover. Uh, I got that done. The turn. Oh, I got all these crystals. Let's spend some. Um. Okay, so let's look at what our options are. Okay. Aren't the research tiles for free upgrades? They are if they are the round ones. Let me show you. Uh, let me show you this. If you get the round one, you see how it's got this little symbol right there in the top left-hand corner? It says, don't spend resources. This one does not say that. So I do not believe so. Let me double check in the reference book for research tiles. Paying normal costs. So no, those are not free. All right, so what are we our options? We could take a blueprint, I mean, Never a bad idea. Move our bot. Well, we just established we don't want to move our bot. We could get re a resource. Yeah. Or our card, but we don't have any blueprint to build an advanced technology or an advanced building. So honestly, I think we take a blueprint. Because I'm going to, I need to spend at least two of these. So it's either take a resource or take a blueprint, right? Uh, I wish there were better blueprints. I don't really have a huge reason for any one of these things. Uh... The green makes the most sense. So how about we just spend two of these and I'll go ahead and get a plant. So I will get a plant here, there. That's the end of my turn, so these will now move in there, like so. There really aren't any great ones, honestly. I, I, I'm really underwhelmed by both of those two blueprints. So yeah, all right. Yeah, I, I'm good with that, so I'm done. So now, Vital goes. There we go. All right. He's taking action number two. Action number two is on the colony side. Upgrade. Here we go. So he's going to upgrade in theory. He has an unlimited number of workers, so he will place or colonists. He will place a colonist there, but he owes one more, so therefore he's going to have to pay one of his two crystals to be able to do so. But now he's going to do an upgrade. Uh, let's see, if the upgrade tech, uh, he has no scientists, so he doesn't really care. So therefore, we're going to use a randomizer, okay? Before I switch back to that screen, I will go one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, 
five, six. Okay. And I believe we're going to use the second number at this point, I think. Yeah, it's around six. So it's going to be two. So it's going to be the top card is the one he's going to uh, upgrade. All right. So again, it was one, two, three, four, five, six. So he's going to upgrade this one, which, hey, that works out. So this is going to, he's going to go through there, pay the mineral, doesn't have to, uh, move the advanced building and displace any bot. Okay, or any uh, worker. So he will then place this. Uh, doesn't matter, honestly, which one. So that'll come back. And now that's available. Doesn't help me, but it will score me points. So there's that. Okay. Okay. Uh, he can only do one of those because this tech is still out there. So he is done. So now, traveling. Am I traveling? You betcha. All right. So I get to take back, or I get resources for anything out here that I have either worker colonists on or advanced buildings on. I believe. I'm rusty, apparently. Yes, one per corresponding to the type of building. Yep. Okay, cool. So I built this, so that's going to get me one mineral. Yay. And again, I'm allowed three of each because I have two shelters and it's always plus one. Good. Then I get my workers back from this side. So this one will come back. And anybody at work will come back. Good, I have a couple of guys now, a couple of folks. And now I'm going to choose any of those. Uh, that's gonna be third because I want to get the extra technology. When I get the technology, that's going to go down and that's going to get me a crystal as well so I don't forget. Uh, I mean, I think the plant makes the most sense. So I will go ahead and do that, which then gets me another resource of my choice. So I will go ahead and take the water. There, done. I got that, that's good, I'm done. So now Lacerda is going to travel and he's going to travel to the first spots, as you guys can see there. So traveling to the first spot, again, he ignores that, he ignores that, he doesn't pull workers back. So he will go to the first spot and first spot gets him nothing and he likes it. All right. So now it's his turn. New round. What's he doing? He's going to do action number three. That's R&D. That rhymed. Did not plan on that. All right. So he is going to attempt to do R&D. R&D is going to be here. It's going to require him to have a colonist, which he has. And then he has to spend one crystal. He happens to have one crystal. So he's good to go there. So now he can advance two. He will always advance, if possible, his highest most and his lowest most. Well, he only has two. So he's gonna bump this twice. That's going to go one, and then the ambiguity rule. Let me double check. Which most benefits Lacerda and the most disadvantage to the human player? Well, putting out an advanced building, good, helps him. Sort of. I mean, it scores him three points, right? Taking a blueprint. Eh, I don't know. So you guys decide, do you feel that one is more advantageous than the other? If the answer is no, we'll randomize it, but 
I can't think of it. I mean, this definitely gets in points. This potentially gets in points. So I would argue that the advanced building, I guess. What do you all think? His lid is killing me. Not all at once. Take your time. That's sarcasm. <laughs> I think so, Rich. I think we advance. So we'll do an advanced building. So which of the two? Again, it doesn't help. Uh, it, there isn't a, so we'll randomize it. Uh, one through three, four through six on that one. So let's see, uh, one through three, so that's a one uh, for round, oh wait, no, round eight, so lower number, so one through four. So it's still going to be the leftmost. So he will build the leftmost, which is going to be out on the plant building, so that will go there. And that one's now available for him and just got him three more points, done. So that means that went there. All right. That was his action, my action, okay. Wow, I wanna do everything, but I think, honestly, I think that's going to be more beneficial, but I can only do one of them. That's the only problem, because I only have one spot available over here now. Uh, but, Which one do I want, is the question. Oh, boy. I already have the plant which will allow me to build a level two complex, which that's gonna work out really, really well for that. Then if I get the water one, that would work out potentially for a, another. The oxygen also is a really good option because that potentially is the level three, which I'm going to need for this thing here. And again, looking at the end game scoring, right? What our goals are here. Reach colony level four, complete two contracts, have colonists in our advanced building markers on at least three mines, and have at least five advanced buildings. So... I have this, which is going to allow me to do one at a time, but ha being able to do that will get me oxygen and be able to bump that up, but it's going to allow him to build more advanced buildings as well. Damn it. But I can only do one. So the question is, the, I mean, this, this, or this, I could make a case for any of those three. Um, I mean, the water is nice because I want to be able to push that up potentially next turn, right? Uh, and, to make, and to be able to put out cubes for both of those. I think that's going to be the most beneficial, is the water, even though it's more expensive. Yeah, I'm going to take the water one. So we're going to go a battery, and then any other thing... And let's see, I'm going to need a battery to build that building. I need a water to build that building. And I will go ahead there. So I'm going to spend those two resources there. And I will take the water. The water will get me a crystal for doing that. Then I got another one of these. So there. So that will get me another crystal. Now, for my executive action, if I don't start taking some actions, um, I need to take something. So I'm going to spend at least two of these. Now I think actually I take a blueprint just because why not? Even though those are the two that I don't have that aren't out there. Uh, 
I mean, I see no reason not to. Or I take another oxygen for the resource. Uh... Oh, hell, let's just take a blueprint. So I'm going to spend those three, and just so I don't forget, these will move up at the end of my turn. And six and one half dozen the other. And I will take the oxygen. That makes the most sense, I think. So I'll take the oxygen one. We'll cover that up there, which means I get an oxygen there, and I will place that there. And that was that action here. So that's my executive action. That's the end of my turn there. And again, I forgot to move the damn ship. All right. Okay. Okay. So now, traveling. Lacerda is not traveling. The question is, am I? I think I am. Yeah, I need to get my workers back. Yeah, yeah, we're traveling. So he is not, I am. So I'm going to place one of those two. So the two that are up there are get three crystals or be able to place an oxygen uh, building. Ah, crystals? I mean, it's extra actions, right? But it also... Eh, yeah, I'm okay with that. But that might allow me to build a level three at some point. Ah, crystals. All right, so I'm going to place it here, which is far away from him. And it's three away from me, so that's good. So we will then... Replenish that. Ship's traveling, so I don't forget. Then I will get my workers back, which means I'm going to get that one, that one, and that one all back. I have space for them now. So now what action do we want? Take another blueprint? Take another, the last resource? Move my bots? I don't think we're moving our bots still. Uh... I mean, last resource or last blueprint? We need five advanced buildings, we said. Let's take the blueprint. There. So we'll take the last one here. So this bad boy will go there, which that will give me a battery. And place another one right there. And nope, no special good. Good. There are three of these out, by the way. This should be dropped down two. And he should have two more crystals. Hopefully that hasn't screwed something up, but it's the hardest thing in this game to remember. So that should be seven. There should be four of them out here. One, two, three, four. So that's good. And then I have claimed one of those. He has claimed none, so that should be at four. Good. All right. Cool. Have a good one, Jonathan. All right. Uh, all right, Lacerda's up. So, round nine, he's taking action number three. Action number three is going to be R&D yet again. And he can do this, barely, but he can do it. So, he's gonna place one there, and he requires two crystals. Remember those two crystals that he was behind on? Well, there you go. He got those. So, our, oh, check that. Put those back. Might be asking why. Uh, because that's why. He can't advance it. Okay. So, we're going to take that worker back. Calling us back. So, he can't take the action. So he's going to do the rover instead, which means yours truly is going to get an oxygen. And he can move, again, five spaces to the nearest tile that he can do. 
that, I would argue, that he can do. So it means he doesn't need to use my tech. So he's not, so I don't get the oxygen. So he's gonna claim this. All right, first things first, he's going to do this. He gets that, which means he's going to get a crystal. So this says, build a battery building. Okay, so we'll put that there. So he's going to build a battery building. So coming over here, there we go. Battery, oh, there we go, battery building. And where is it going to go? And the battery still got to be a level one, so it's going to be two away from one of those. Let's take a look. Hey, Scott. And this will be over on the far bottom left per that dark hex on the card. So the dark hex says, let's see, closest to this, so it looks like it's going to go right here. So we're going to put down three more crystals. One, two, three. That will flip over. He gets a battery, doesn't matter. Battery here. Uh, that will advance that. But he doesn't get anything for it because, or he gets this for welcoming a ship. But he doesn't get this because it is above, equal to, or above the colony level. So he gets zero points because he has welcomed exactly zero ships. So he built a building. That's it. It wasn't a complex, so not there. Done. That was all for moving his rover. He's done. It's my turn. So what are we going to do now that we have moved? Building advanced buildings makes sense. So we cannot do this. We're building a building. That's what we said, right? We now have the ability to build level two complexes for both the greenery and the water. And we are in a position in which to do either or both. Unfortunately, you can't boost it. Boo. Or no, not boosted. All right. Now you're making me all paranoid. Rich. Nope. Construct the depicted type of building. I'm good. Phew. All right. I'm good. All right. So we're building a building. Which one do we want to build? The Water, I think, makes the most sense. So let's go ahead and build the water building. So choose a water, uh, choose a building. I choose Agua. So we're going to choose the Agua. It's going to cost me a battery. Okay, so we're going to build that one. It's going to cost us a battery. Done. Okay. Place the building. I can do a level two complex. It is directly adjacent to my bot. Here. So I could build it there or there, <laughs> sorry, mm. okay, there. All right, so I'm going to get two water resources. Well, I can only actually keep one of them, unfortunately. So there, okay, done. So now getting back to the map. So that is a water building. So let's actually come over here. That is going to be here. It is a complex, I get to put that. Okay, then I'm going to score two points. Welcome to the game, Edward. Then for the highest level of technology that you have, so that is going to be a three points for that one. So it's going to be a total of five points for yours truly. And there we are. All right, but then I get a bonus of any of these things. I could take one worker back. I have none that on the board, so no. Move my rover, take a crystal, or a mineral. Well, I'm maxed on minerals, so not doing that. I still kind of like where my rover is, or where my uh, bot is, so I'm not doing that. So I guess we're taking a crystal. Those four options right there. 
and we'll take a crystal. And now for special ability, or for executive action, I'm sorry. Uh, no blueprint, so I can't take that. I could build an advanced building. And I think that's what we're going to do. So let's take a look at my tableau here. Okay. Take care, Brian. Hey, Peter. All right. So build a advanced building. I'm only allowed one. It's not. It, ew, it is boostable. Maybe we build them both. Hold on one second. So to take the action is that scientist, which I do not have, or two crystals. I do have those. So I will spend two crystals. I think we're going to boost it. So to be able to build both of those, each of them require a mineral. So I will spend the two minerals to do that. All right. So then this will go out on an oxygen building. This will go out on a battery building. All right. Battery. Ew, I cannot build that one. I can build that one. Cannot build the battery one. So I will not put him back to work and I will take the mineral back. Oh, wait, maybe I can't, hold on. Maybe I'm getting confused with building buildings. Uh, give me a second. You guys ever like lose sight of simple stuff like this on occasion? Yeah, it has to be in the zone of your bot. Okay, that's what I thought. So I will take my mineral back. I cannot do both. I can only do one. So I'm not boosting it here. And I put that back, but I did do this one. Done. All right, that was my executive action. So this will then come up here. That is the end of my turn. So now, do I wish to travel? I do not think I do yet. Let me check. I do not wish to travel, so I am not. He's not traveling, so that will go there. All right. All right, so now, round 10. All right, he's going to take action numero 2 -o, which is going to be learn new technology. And he's going to choose the cheapest and the leftmost. All right. Cheapest and leftmost. So we can advance now two. Now, because of this here, this is going to advance. He's going to grab a crystal. This. And it will always go to the topmost. And because of that, He'll take this, but he doesn't actually keep it, so he just throws it away, and that's done. Okay. Done. Oh, and I did this. And that gives me a crystal. Thank you. So, just to check. That should be four advanced buildings out there. One, two, three, four. Check. This is at two. There means there are five technologies. One, two, three, four, five. Check. And that says there have been two of those tiles. One, two, check. So we're good. Take care, Rich. All right. All right. So it's now my turn. What are we trying to do? We could build. Uh, cannot because my bot's not within range of those buildings up there. But... I think we're going to go ahead and do that bad boy. So we will build. Hold on. We just built, didn't we? We did. A moment. I forgot to do this when I built last turn. There, and that will have cost me one more. So that guy would have gone there. My apologies. So now it's my turn. I will build there, and that will cost me 
two things. Hoo-wee. What do we, now this is going to be, you know what? I'm about to travel, so I will do this. There. That took two additional because of the two that were already up there. So we are going to build. What are we going to build? We're going to build a level two plant building. Okay. Hey, Sarah. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, you got this. <coughs> All right. So we're building a plant building here. So it's going to require one agua, not to be confused with aqua chile. So... I will spend one agua. I can build a level two complex. It is adjacent to where my bot is, so I could, uh, I cannot build it there. It must be there. Nothing. That would kill it. And there, so that will go there. This will now flip. That's going to get me two plants for that. I have room for both of them. All right. So that is done with that part of the board. But now we built a complex for this. So I get to move uh, this cube over onto there. That's awesome. Then that's going to bump up. It's going to be two points plus, let me get the exactly what that is for the LSS. That is two points for each advanced building marker you have on Mars. Okay, so it's going to be two for this. Four, six points all day. Up to 11. Nice. Then I get one of these. Uh, minerals are good, but so are workers. A moment. But if he builds and he's going to travel, he's going to kick those workers out already. So I'm not going to pull. What I'm talking about is it's full, so he's going to kick those out, the two for me. So I don't need to waste that action. So we're talking about for these here, I think taking a mineral makes the most sense. So I will take le mineral. That is French for the mineral. All right. So now I've gotten all the bonuses, but now you notice we finally have a colony bump. All right, so we're gonna pause. Oh shoot, I can't travel yet, can I? Son of a, why did I, oh boy. It's all right, nope, can't take a second. Eh, but we're gonna, I can welcome a ship. Yep, we're okay with that. All right. So let's run through the steps of when we get a colony bump. A moment. I will make sure they don't forget any steps here. All right. Here we go. Found it. Move the colony level up one level. And yes, you have to make that sound. New blueprint cards are added. So remove, uh, if we just reached colony level two, remove all remaining blueprints from the display. Add the top 12. Okay, so add the top 12. And that's all the level ones. Check that. I guess technically they were supposed to be there, but not the first one. But. And we have the level threes out. Good. Refill any empty spaces on the tech grid. We don't do that in the two player, these guys. Then refill the warehouse, only two each or up to two. So if there were anything remaining, then you wouldn't, you still only up to two total in the two player game.
That's right. Because we're going to, we are now at colony level n number two. Remind me of that when I move the ship, y'all. Every time I move the ship. Colony level two. All right, done. Now, the first two times the colony status is updated, we're going to gain points per the LSS. All right, so let's take a look. How many cubes do we have out here? He has one, he gets one point. I have two, I'm going to get two points. Okay, cool. So he gets one, I get two. Cool, daddy -o. If the colony level is now at level three or higher, the remaining number of missions would drop, but it's not. So now note, we'll not get uh, that bonus for raising this because that's already at that level, okay? However, we are not done with that. You might be asking yourself why, because every time the colony levels up, at the end of the current player's turn, which technically I still have, uh, hmm, hold on one second. I need to check the timing of something. At the end of your turn, okay. So what I, what I'm, what I was checking real quick was because I still technically have a uh, executive action, technically the colony hasn't leveled up yet. So what I mean by that is I cannot uh, take any of these, I cannot take any of the blueprints, none of that exists quite yet. So on any of this, what do I want to do? No blueprints exist, no resources exist. Uh, the bot, I'm not gonna move, I don't think. Hold on. Nope, not doing any executive action. So never mind. It's a cow's opinion. It's moo. So Lacerda builds a shelter, okay? And he builds a complex if possible. It's definitely possible. So what direction is he going to build? He is going to build in towards the bottom right, towards that dark hex there. So he will build this shelter towards the bottom right. So that will go there. He'll get two crystals for doing that. By the way, that will have gone away. Then he places a bot on his player board. So one of his bots here just hangs out up here. It's going to be worth points at the end of the game. Uh, and then he welcomes a new ship. Which one doesn't matter because he doesn't take executive actions. So there's that, and so now that will go and that will go away. All right, we are now done. That was the end of my turn. Hey, Portos. All right, so will he travel? Check out Arrow by the Knee, he is going to travel. So he, now we have a lot of steps here. So he is traveling. So he's going to place the left one. Again, this is going to move to the second spot. So it's going to be three away, as far away as possible from me, and it will be towards that, but that it's going to be over in this direction regardless. So that's going to be probably there. That's the furthest reach from me as possible. So putting that there, this will flip, and then He's going to build. What's he going to build? He's going to build an oxygen building. All right. So oxygen here. No crystals on this one. And the oxygen building is still here. So it's going to be a level one complex. And what direction is he going to build it in? It's going to be towards the bottom right. Again, towards that dark hex. So let's see. Towards that dark hex for an oxygen. So it's going to, oh, where was the exact spot, actually? It is technically here if possible, which it is not, but that is. So that is the closest spot there. This will advance. How many points for those will he get? 
That'll be two points per, so that's two points for that. He has not placed the scientist, so he will get a crystal instead. And now we need to figure out where he's going to go. Where does he land? He goes into spot number three, which is available per the dark spot on the top row. All right, so the third spot says now he's going to move his bot two spots. Well, he just built this, so that will have moved it there. Then he's going to move his, just moved it here from there. And then it's going to move two spots per that there. All right. That was travel. It's now his turn. What's he going to do? Still an X up top, so he's going to take action number two. Action number two is upgrade a building. All right, upgrading a building will require him, and that crystal goes away, to place that there, and he will owe one crystal for doing that, which he has plenty to do. So upgrading a building, he can actually upgrade two buildings because now that this technology is here, but he only has one that he can upgrade, so okay. So this is going to go onto a water building, and of the two, it will be towards the, towards the right side, top right, you know, northeast corner there. So let's take a look towards the top east corner. So that'll go there. Uh, done. Okay, so he's done. And he did this, which means he will get one more crystal, which he does have space for. So that will go there. And the turn of the Lacerda is done. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. Not technically undefined, but... Got a new sponsor, first sponsor in a while for the show, uh, Geek and Son. So it's a new, uh, a new table. In fact, give me a second. It is a uh, for those that are that are unfamiliar with Geek and Son. I I, I gotta say that this table is a uh, impressive. It's, it's a bit more than what I need. Um, so this is, this is the Virgo. It's the, the uh, prototype of the Virgo, technically. It's, um, it's pretty over the top. I will show you guys some details a little bit later about it, all right? Uh, all right, cool. But anyway, yeah, this Virgo is insane. It really is, it's amazing. So, wow, Serbia in the house. Hey, Mirren. All right. Whew. All right. I so got to stop doing that because I lost my train of thought. So it is me. All right. Okay. So I have no workers. Hmm. Hold on one second. So, again, my goals. Reach colony level four, we're at two right now. Two contracts. We're not at anywhere at each of them there. Three mon, oh God, this is really getting hard. I have one thing on a mind. But there are more bills, there's one, one out there, one for a mind. Wow, really? Oof. Well, I guess I could build another mine. That would be the third thing. Okay. Have at least five advanced buildings. That would be the fourth one. And beat them by 20 points. We can do this. We just need more contracts, which means we need scientists. <laughs> I'm telling you, these allergies are killing me. Excuse me. What I want to check now is the timing of placing a worker out there.
Aha! Ah, in the working area. Never mind. I was trying to get all sneaky because before you take the action, if you're going to take an action, if it's full, whatever color has the most workers will get those workers back, but they go into your working area and not available. I assume that, but I wanted to double check. Ah, you know what? Games of fire. You're not late. You're here. That's all that matters. So I have no workers, no, no, uh, colonists. So I'm not doing that, not doing that, not doing that. I can do those too. I can welcome a ship, which seems awfully good at this point. Huh. Or move my rover, right? My rover can still move five spots, and it's boostable with crystals, so I can move him pretty much anywhere I want to move it. Could grab some crystals, which allow me to then grab a blueprint or, you know, whatever. Uh, but welcoming a ship would allow me to grab another bot, which I think I'm going to want to do, I think. I'm going to need to welcome a ship plus the extra ability. Yeah, I, okay. We're going to, God, I want to do this though. Um... And the fact that that is still there, I can't, I have to get to, so he has to move up to there. But then that allows me to build a mine complex, which is part of what I need. Oh, you know what? I have two actions, don't I? So what do I think he's going to do for the next turn? So why don't I do this and then I welcome a ship for the next, or I could welcome a ship, which then gives me workers. Ugh. Ah. I actually want to take three actions now over here, but it would take me way too long. So I have to travel. So being able to get these bumped up, which allow me to buy, get more of those. But that doesn't really help me. Blueprints helps me. But I can get a blueprint here. So if I were to take the action of getting that, and then moving this up here. The whole point of doing that is to be able to build this advanced building and to be closer for the mine to be able to build a mine. Then the next turn, I welcome a ship, which gets me two more colonists and gives me an extra ability and I can also grab a blueprint while I'm at it. Come up here. Oh. Golly. But if I do do that, then I have this available, which gives me two bumps. But I need the bumps for, oh boy. All right, there we go. We're gonna do this, final answer, I think. Just curious. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's too far. Um, wow, this is really hard. Wow. Hey, Ben. Thanks. <sighs> yeah, 
Yep, final answer. We're going to do this. We're going to move that two to go there to lock that in for there and that for that. I think I'm in a good position. I also have this to be able to do more plants if I want because I'm going to go one, two, three, four to grab that, which unfortunately doesn't get that, but that's okay. This, however, does allow me here two bumps without having to pay for them. So the two bumps are going to be If we did the plants for sure, we'll go there. Because the reason I'm looking at the plant one is he might build this, but not that. So I don't want him to be able to build the level three complex to be able to put, uh, put that down there. Uh, he'll, no, he won't be able to, because it's only a level two. So I'm trying to play defensive a little bit on him there, plus, Plus, it opens up a slot here in case I go for this, which then will give me this, which allows me two bumps there or to take a colonist. I think that's a good idea. I like that idea. Okay. Appreciate it, more coffee. So I think that for sure is what we need to do. But now the question is, what else do we do? What else do we bump? I mean, it's going to be one of those two. It's not going to be that. We know for a fact I don't want to bump that. This gives me that, but I actually don't want to use it since I just took that. Or I just moved him to where I wanted to. So I guess we move that there for free. I guess. Go with it. But now we have an executive action. Now we can do a, a couple of different things. We have three here. We can grab a blueprint, which they just came out, which is awfully tasty. And again, looking at that one with the mine one, that makes sense, okay. That allows us to have a second blueprint, which allows us to have two advanced buildings. And because he's already built this or, or already acquired this, we could build both of them in one action. Or, or, we could use this, which allows us to build that. I think we take the blueprint because we're going to take this action next turn to be able to trigger our contract so, or our private goal. So I think that's what we do. I think we go ahead and spend these three here to go ahead and do take the blueprint action, okay? So let's go ahead and talk about the level two, uh, or level three, as it were, blueprint. So the level ones are all the same as what they were, right? As far as, you know, this is building a shelter and whatever gives you crystals. Um, I don't need to go over the special abilities on those, I don't think. The level three, however, you'll notice it requires a uh, mineral, but it must be on a level three complex. A level three complex, you'll notice there are none out here yet. But he has that there, which allows me to do so. So if I build that building, or if he builds that building there, then I can place that onto there. I mean, what else is possible? The plant one is a level three, so let's look. The plant one is this one. This says I could uh, take one worker, take all my workers back on one side, either although in orbit or on uh, colony. That's kind of nice. The other one way down there, I have no idea what that does. The green one is... Spend one resource from your storage and take any two mineral resources from the general supply. For each colonist you send to your working area, take another resource. So it basically allows you to trade. Eh. You know what? Let's face it, we know what I'm taking. Ah, but the problem is I don't get the mineral. Damn it. Is that a really big deal?
Is it a really big deal? No, I'll forego the mineral. So this will, I'm running out of room a little bit here, not taking the mineral, doesn't matter because I have three already. So there we go. That's my special, uh, my executive action. The turn of the yellow player is complete. Nobody is traveling because the ship isn't traveling. Instead, that just advances. Then we go here, boom, Lacerda now takes his turn. All right, round 12. He's going to take action number one. And action number one, you guessed it, build a building. All right, so to build a building, first and foremost, a couple things are going to happen. These are going to come back into my working area. That is kind of important because when I travel, I actually get two more back than I would have gotten. So that's kind of nice. So that happens before he takes his action. That will have to go there. And then he has to pay one crystal. And he has plenty. So there. What building is he going to build? Going to be a water building. Agua. Okay, so where is he going to build it? And this is a level two. This is, and this is really important. I kind of talked about the reason I didn't upgrade this is for exactly this reason. It's a level two complex max that he can build, right? Well, let's take a look here. There is already a level two. So if he were to add this to it, it would be a level three. He cannot do that. So therefore, it's going to be a level one. And the reason that matters is he can't put out his uh, cube out here, which is less points for him. That's good. So where is he going to build it? He's going to build it a little bit kind of east by northeast per that dark hex out there. All right. So that would be about right there. That looks like to me. So let's put some crystals out. One there, one there, one there. Not a flip, he would get a water, doesn't matter. But he built the building, so therefore, this will bump. Per each of those, he, the highest one he has, and is it of the ones that he, including his first one, let me look. Most developed tactile. Well, his most developed tactile Unfortunate. Oh, God. Tell me that's not nine points. Really? Is it per the level or... Hold on. Equal to the level. Okay. So it's going to be that number, which is going to be six points. Hey, hey, Jamil. Six points for bumping that up. Jeez. Well, that kind of sucked. And then... He doesn't have any scientists up here, so he's going to take a crystal instead. There we go. And he's done. Oh, hey, Jess. How's Cooper? If y'all haven't heard, Jess and I got a dog. Sort of. I'll let Jess explain that. All right, he's done. My turn. I still have no workers. Nope, nope, nope. Maybe, probably that. So, here's something I didn't anticipate now. Oh, and that moves. Almost forgot. All right. Uh, didn't we do this already? Didn't we do a four player of this? Or did we do three player? I forget. We did a stream of that already. All right, uh, I, I understand that that was, that was the goal, that was the plan this turn. But hold on, what if we did this again? Let's look at this, shall we? I can move five. One, two, three, four, five, and get a crystal, and I get two bumps on that. That would allow me an advance and a blueprint. Oh my. Or one, one or the other, right? 
That would give me a blueprint. And then one other. Yeah, I could peg that out. I do need a fifth blueprint, right? Got to be colony level four or above, complete two con... The contracts are what's scaring me at this point. The mines, five advanced buildings. I, I, I think I can do all of that. Or do we welcome a ship? If we welcome a ship... I also need to be able to, oh, man. One, two, three, four, five. Ooh, that could, ooh. That could give me four crystals. No, nope, we're welcoming a ship. I think it's the right call. I think so. It feels like it's the right thing. I'm not saying it is, I'm saying it feels like it is. So, one, uh, one plant and one water, there and there. And what ship are we going to do? Doesn't make sense to do the advance because I already have that here. So, that seems good to be able to bump those up or to be able to move my rover. Also tasty. And that would allow me to move that six, right? Oh, I think that's gotta be it. Yeah, that'll be that one. So now, do we get another bot? Okay, we're definitely going to get a colonist. We know that. So we have that, I'll go there. Do we get a second one? Well, we have room for five. So I think we do get a bot right now. Okay. So we get a bot. And the bot's got to go on one of these guys. So that'll go there. Yeah, done. No executive action, because, again, I don't have the right scientist, and I have no crystals. I'm done. All right, so traveling. Is Lacerda traveling, because we go left to right? Lacerda, error to the knee. Yes, he is traveling. So, where is he going? He's going to the first spot, as you can see there. So, we go to the travel spot, and he ignores both of those. So, he goes to the first spot. I'm traveling. I don't ignore. So, what do I get? I get two crystals, an oxygen... Uh, you guys can't see this. I am doing a poor job. Let's try that again. I'm getting, sorry, a crystal, an oxygen, and a mineral. Wait a minute. Let's try that again. I'm getting an oxygen and a mineral, and that's that. And... Because uh, apparently I fail at this, I don't get a mineral, but I get an oxygen. Whee! Yay. Because I'm full. Yeah. What can you do? All right. Zutele. All right. So now, what do we want? Oh. Oh. Well, thank you, Lacerda, for letting me do that. I will go there and take one of these bad boys. And what one are we going to take? We're gonna take this one, and that one will cost us a battery, which we do have. That will then come here, which then allows me to take a resource of my choice. Okay, let's think about this. I now have five, which means I now qualify for this, which means I can get two bumps if I want.
resource of my choice, and a battery. So now I'm looking at scientists. So I am all over the place with that crap. A moment. We're going to do this. Literally, I am all over the place, so I don't think it really matters. Uh, I'll take a crystal, honestly. So I will take that. I did C, which bumps this down. So there should be one, two, three, four, five, six. Should be down to one. It is. That will give me one more crystal for doing that. And now I qualify for this. And is that on your turn you can turn those in? During your turn in the colonization phase, so I can't do it right now. All right. So I got the resource. I did that. Got that there. All my workers, these guys come back and fill up all their homes here. Done. And done. So now we traveled. We're in two. So there. And now it's Lacerda's turn. There we go. All right. So now, for the first time in round 13, he, Lacerda, notice the B at the very top. He is going to help with B by, by default. So what that means is, as if he had done this, that's going to advance one, and he's going to get a crystal for doing that. Okay? All right. Then, he's going to do action number one. And action number one is obtain a blueprint. All right. So, you'll notice, first things first, he will put a worker out there. And put a worker out there, as he did. And then it's going to cost them a crystal because one is already out there. So there, done, okay. So now let's take a look, what blueprint? He still has no scientist, shockingly. Leftmost row with the most cards in it, and if tied, we'll take from the bottom row. So it sure sounds like that card right here, okay? So he will take that. There, he will put that there, and the Lacerda is done. All right, we are getting real close to the end here. Um, I need contracts. All right, so what do I need? One, two, three, four. I only have four. By the way, those should be up here now, and this will be there. I have two crystals. And I have two actions over here before I'm traveling. Takes four crystals to move my rover. We could load up on resources. I know I need one more blueprint. I have to have one more blueprint. And I need to build another shelter. I need to, be, I need to build a ton of stuff. So mines, so I need colonists, I need oxygen. Colonists, oxygen, and I need a... Oh, you know what? Ha, 
Forget about this. Let's go ahead and take care of this, shall we? I qualify for this because I have five. One, two, three, four, five, and your base one does count for it. So I'm going to turn this bad boy in right, real quick. And I can choose one of the two actions, which is either reclaim a colonist from the board or two bumps of my choice. And I'm going to take the two bumps of my choice and not have to pay the, uh, and not pay the resources for it. So that's done and out of the game. So what that means is these are going to flip over. And technically, they were already like this. Technically. These can be used as crystals at any time. So I get two bumps. This is going to be to take a blueprint, and it is boostable. So I might take another blueprint. So there's one. And then I am going to want to get to a level four shelter. So I think I'm going to boost that as well. And that means my bot can move two spaces as well. So first and foremost, let's take a look at the blueprints, shall we? All right. Does not say what blueprints I have to take, right? Like, or uh, any, because this one, I know I'm gonna be doing this. Now the difference is a difference of three points versus five points for a level one versus a level three. Now honestly, getting more crystals or, which is nice given all the stuff I want to try and do, or to be able to build another shelter when I build that one. But I think crystals are going to be more important, so I'm going to actually, because there are no other mineral ones out there, I think that's going to be the most important one to take, so I will take this guy, which is going to immediately get me a crystal. So that's cool. So I will go there. I will put that and I will get a crystal, but I can't use the crystal till next turn. Now I can move my bot to spots, any mix of them. I'm happy with where that one is positioned, I think, right? Because the mineral there, cool, good. Uh, You know what? I think if we moved him there for one space. I think I'm going to leave it there. There you go. That's done. So that was here. And again, I still have these. So I still have an executive action and I still have my main action to go. So my executive action could be, I have four technically. I have two and I have two others available, I could move my rover, which is seven spots if I wanted. Could take another blueprint or do one of these out here If we did eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, that's probably too far. Uh, I can build two advanced buildings. Let me see. Next to a mine, or on a mine, there are, isn't a mine available. Ah, uh, there is. That's got to be a complex of three. I got to build a mine first there. This one is a level one on a battery building, which I can build that there, and on a shelter. So I could build two of those. I'm just thinking about either there or stretching out to get there somehow. Oh boy, what am I trying to do? So I have enough blueprints. Golly, what am I trying to do? I need, I'm, I'm good on resources. Advancing this might not be a terrible idea.
Actually, I think that might be the right thing to do. Oh, man, there's so many options. All right, I am going to do this. All right. That took a long time to walk through. I apologize. It's a big decision, though. First things first, one of my guys has got to come here. And then I owe two more in my in-work area. So these two are going to come hang out there. So that is going to allow me two bumps, possibly more boostable per this, right? See that? Okay. So two bumps. <laughs> Here it is. One, and I owe an oxygen for that. Then I will bump that, which is going to be an oxygen or something else. And I will spend a plant for that. So that was my two bumps. It is boostable. And I get to do advan uh, upgrade up to two upgrades per where that is, right? So I am going to do two, so he's going to get an oxygen, which means this is going to bump one. So now, getting back to me, I'm going to do two, so it's going to cost me one of my workers to come to work. Okay, so what two am I going to do? going to do this one, which has to go on a shelter, a level one, and I will have to spend one mineral to do that. That will then, that's adjacent to where one of my bots is, that's good to go, that's done. Then, I will go ahead and do this one, it's going to cost the mineral on a battery building here, so that's a mineral, and a battery building that is adjacent here, so that will go, and that's four of my five that I need now. And what I am looking at now yep you immediately gain the benefit huh. meaning as soon as I did this I immediately get the benefit well it's boostable remember right this is boostable here so I could go ahead and spend one more guy to go ahead and boost that there, which will give me a mineral back. But to do that, it cost me an oxygen, so I will spend that. That works out. And I have one action left, and I'll be okay. And we still have an executive action that we can take if we want. The funny thing is, is the question is, do I want to speed up things? Because if I do, I can spend all four crystals to go one, two, three, four, five. To get four crystals, advance this one and get actually five crystals. So I can spend four to get a crystal, but I also get that advanced one step, which gets us that much closer to the end of the game. Am I in a position in which I'll be able to... Hmm. Oh, and we just built two of those. So that goes there, and I'm going to get two more crystals. So probably not. I don't want to do that now. Oy vey. 
What am I trying to do with my rover then? Get more bumps? Get more resources? I probably need resources, don't I? Because I need oxygen for those and I need mines for those. Okay, so I'll spend two crystals here to be able to get an oxygen. And that's going to be my executive action. Done. Woo-wee! That was, that was excessive. Wow. All right. Wow. That was a lot of stuff. Ugh. All right. Done. All right, he is going to help out B and do action number one. So B goes there. He will get a crystal for that. And he will do action number one. Action number one is obtaining the blueprint. He still doesn't have a scientist somehow, some way. Takes the leftmost with the most cards. And if still tied, take the leftmost from the bottom. He will take this one. And now that can go there, that will go there, and he's done. My turn, I guess I take resources. I take two of them and call it good because we're going to travel. Because I have one worker left? I think so. Yeah, I'm going to take this action here and I'm going to boost it one. So I'm going to take the oxygen. One, and the crystal. Done. So now traveling. Oh, oh, sorry. Executive action. Do I want to? Do I want to take another resource? No. Do I want to do any of these things? Build a uh, level two oxygen? No, because those would be level threes if I built there, there. No, so unfortunately, err. A level one battery, because that's still out there? No. Build an advanced building. I cannot build this because there's not a level three mine yet. So no on any of those. So then over here, take a resource? No, move my rover or my uh, bot? No. Take a blueprint. Or move my rover. Uh, I only have three. I cannot. I can take a blueprint, though. And because of this, I'm thinking that shelter blueprint makes sense. If tied, take the leftmost card from the row with the most cards in it. Thank you. Good catch, Carlos. So that wouldn't have gone. Because the top row has more cards in it, he would have taken, if Ty take the leftmost card from the row with the card, yes, good call, Carlos. He would have taken this one. Good call. You the man. All right. I am going to take a blueprint here, but it spends three crystals. Is it worth it? I think so. So I'm going to spend three crystals to take a blueprint. I'm going to take that one. So this, oh, I do have these still. We'll go there. I will get a crystal for that. And I will build, put that right there. Done. Yep, done. That's my executive. So traveling now. Hey, York. He's traveling. All right, here we go, big steps. Building due east on that. So he will put this one out, three away, and as far away from me as possible. So he would put it 
due east, so he's not going to go that way. This would be as far as possible. He'll put it there. This will die. Done. We will refill this. Then, next, oh wow, this is going to be a massive turn. All right. So he is going to choose the first location, as you guys can see there on the top of the board. So he's choosing that, but he's going to build. Okay. So what is he going to build? He's going to build this one, which is going to be a plant building. Okay, so we take a look up to a complex of four size there so we're good to go so he's going to build which means i'm going to get an oxygen if i want it or i can advance the plant one i'll figure that out in a minute but the plant one where is he going to build it he's going to build it as i said kind of east southeast per that dark hex there all right so let's take a look now east so the closest is going to be this one so he's going to build now the plant building, we said. So the plant building is going to be this one. So it, there are no crystals on this, so it's just going to kill that crystal. This will be built there. He would technically get three uh, plants, but he doesn't care about that. But the plant one will come out, and that will go here. And then, because he built that, this is going to bump up. He's then going to get two points for each advanced tech building that he has out on the board. Two, four, six points for that. He goes to 19. All right, so let's see. No, no, no. Okay, done. But we just reached a new colony level. All right, so new colony level. First things first. Let's get this all in the right order. Wrong page. All right. First things first. Colony level moves up one level. All right, done. Then new blueprints. All the level ones come out or go away. Good thing I bought that when I did, I think. So level ones will go away. All of the level twos or threes, as it were, will come out. Yeah, we're good. There we go. Uh, don't refill. We do refill here. There. There. And two oxygen. There and there. All right. So now we are going to score this. So it's going to be two points apiece because we each have two cubes out there. Two and two, done. And now, because we have reached this, that means this is going to advance one. Now the reason that matters, this is on one, that is on one, and that is on one. Two bumps, and that's the end of the game, y'all. So we are dangerously close. Now, we're not done with this because again, Lacerda builds a shelter and again, he is going to build the shelter now east, southeast, per the board. So his shelter, he can't go this way, so it's going to go right there. And he can, he has plenty of room. He will then get three crystals for doing that. So he built a shelter, place a bot on his player board there, and then he welcomes a new ship. So that will come out and go there. So now he has four crystals here, but he actually only has room for one of them. So three of them die. That was his travel. It's now my turn to travel and oh, you betcha, we're going to travel. All right. So, um, building seems good. 
we'll do this one. Place it three away from my... One, two, three, four, five. Put it there. The closest will be there. That'll work. Yep. So I will place that. I will replenish that as well. Then I pick up any from here. There are none, but I get all these guys back from at work. And what do we want to choose? Take a blueprint. We're going to move our bot up to two spots because, or are we? Ah. Those should have come up. Or are we? I don't think I want a blueprint at this point. Do I want a resource? Actually, I don't think I want to move my bot. I guess I'll take a resource. And what resource do we want? Uh, crystal, when I doubt. There we go. Done. Whew. And we are now at level three. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, thank you. Yep. One more thing. And because of him using my plant, I can either bump my plant or take the oxygen. I know I'm going to need two oxygen for that. You know what? It's a point. And that would be a level four. I'll take that and get rid of the oxygen. Good call. Thanks, Michael. I have played this now probably seven, eight times and essentially three solo. This is my third. Whew. All right, Lacerda's turn. Probably penultimate round. So he is taking A, you'll notice in action number one, okay? So A says, that's going to complete this, that's going to give him a crystal. So now the next thing that, ha or that completes will trigger the end of the game but then we take one final turn and then we go into final scoring. So that's two because that one is now done. And because that is done, I'm just gonna turn that over so I don't forget. All right, so now he's taking action number one, which is building. And you know what? I forgot to move this when I built last time. So he is going to build an oxygen building and the oxygen building is going to be this one. And that's going to be crystals. And where is he going to go? Bottom left. So southwest. All right. So an oxygen can only be a level two. But he can do this in southwest. So let's look at that. Yeah, that looks good to me. Crystals, sorry. There and there. That'll flip. It would give him two oxygen. Here, that is a complex, so therefore he's going to be able to get this out there. He gets that. Two points per. That's going to be two points for that. Will you stop that? Okay. And because it raised that here, he doesn't have a scientist, so he's going to get a crystal in lieu of that. And done. So those crystals are gone for him. My action. Oh, Nelly. Oh, that was dirty, dude. Oh, glory to Rome, Lacerda. I just realized that. Dude, you suck. The reason is I was going to build a mine right here. Oh, that was dirty. 
I am not a fan of that, bro. Uh, all right, well, I guess we're going to have to now adjust what we were going to do. Or our, uh, hold on. I also want to build a shelter. Oh, there's so much I want to do right now. Um, by the way, that should have moved to a mine. Okay, that makes that decision. I'm going to, yeah, I have to do this before he does. But if, but if I do a level th three, maybe I don't have to because that, I can build up to a level six of that. So maybe I wait on that and I build... One, huh, huh, oh, what do we do first? Do we build the shelter? I need to build three things, or shelter, mine, and then the advanced buildings, plus contracts. Oh, God. All right, we're going to build a shelter first. So there's that. It's going to cost me two additional somethings. It's going to be one crystal and one colonist for that, to be able to then build this. It's going to cost me an oxygen to be able to build it. And I will place it right here where that is. That will displace this to an adjacent location. That's going to get me three crystals for doing that. Done. Whee! Do I want to take an executive action with those two to move my rover? Uh, sorry, not my rover, my bot. I am about to get three. I am. I'm going to spend these two crystals to move my bot two spots. I don't know where he, oh, I don't know where, oh. You know what, I'm not. I am, I'm gonna spend those two and I'm gonna spend one of my cards. And I'm gonna move my, my bot three. One, two, three, there. That way it gives me flexibility for wherever he builds. I'll be able to build that mine. There we go. Oy vey. All right. Lacerda, you're up. C. He's going to help with C. That finishes this one. It's going to give him a crystal. That will trigger now this. At the end of the colonization phase, if the remaining mission has reached the end of its track, the end of the game is triggered. When the end of the game is triggered, play until the end of the current round and then play one more round and skip the shuttle phase in the final round. So in other words, Lacerda has this and one more action. I have two, and that's it. All right. So he is going to take action number one. Build a mine. Southeast. East, southeast. He's going to build a mine per this. So the mine is going to place a crystal. So east, southeast is going to be down here. So it's going to be just one crystal right here, the one that he just destroyed. That will go there.
He's already got a cube out there, and it's plenty big enough. He's done. That's it. My turn. Before I do anything, I am going to build. These should have been up here. I'm going to build, so these guys now will be removed. I then have to place one out there. And then I have to place one more. Done. I'm going to build a mine right there. You know what? I'm going to hold off. I'm going to spend a crystal instead. And in fact, yeah, that one. Done. So building a mine here. It's going to be exactly where my bot is. It's going to move that it's there. That will get me up to four minerals, which I'm allowed to have a total of four, so that'll get me two minerals for that. And I have to place a colonist, and the colonist, I believe, has to come from here, there. Then for my executive action, I'm not going to reach colony level four. So colony level three, I need to complete two contracts. Son of a, a private goal, two resource tiles, four shelters. So I'm not going to be able to do it. Oh, that's gross. I'm going to fail. Oh, man. Well, all right. Do the best we can though, right? I'm not seeing it. I don't see the path to be able to, yeah. Because I can't take two contracts. I should have taken one more earlier. Oh, well. So my special act, executive action. I'm not taking one. Done. So now, the last round. C doesn't happen. He does action number two. Action number two is upgrading, and luckily, it's his last upgrade. So this is going to go onto a plant, so that will go there, and done. And for me, I will place a scientist here, or I'm sorry, a colonist there, I will take this one, which is going to cost me one crystal. I will claim this card. Ha! Which says I gotta have a level four. I'm one short, aren't I? Nope, I'm not gonna claim that. Never mind. Oh, man. All right, my executive action is going to be to spend those two to do this, which then I will spend my last colonist to place two advanced buildings. One will go onto that. That will cost the mineral. This will cost the mineral. This will get placed right there. 
Sorry. There. So that's my executive, and then my other action is... I have no workers. Ah! Uh, but... I can do this or this, and I think that makes the, the most sense. I have one here. That's five, six, seven, eight, potentially. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a build right there, isn't it? Okay. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. That'll be another crystal. I get those two crystals. I get this, because that technically now is done. This allows me to build. I'll build another shelter. I'll spend the oxygen. The oxygen will go right there. That will get me up to four crystals. I can move my bot, it doesn't matter. So then I can keep up to five of those. And thus, the end of the game. All right, so now let's go through this, shall we? Ah! Angry about that. Short on contracts. Son of a... All right. End game scoring. Here we go. First things first. Progress cubes in the progress area. Oh, by the way, I should have been able to place that as well, and that would have advanced, but there we go. So that's going to be three and three, so that's going to be four points. Sorry. Four points apiece for he and I. Four and four. Done. Then, three points for every ship in your hangar, per that. So, I have two, he has two. Six points apiece. Will you stop that? Okay. Then... Return all the colonists from the side of the board where your player marker is and from your working area. Okay. So, these two come back. His don't matter. <laughs> really? That's it? They have to be filled bottom to top. If there's not enough space, you score the OP according to the indicated number next to your highest located colonists. Three points. So, because I had, where are they all? Did I only have, I only had, wow. So I have one out there and I have one there. That would have gotten me another three points. Now, uh, for Lacerda, however, it is implied that he has all of these filled. So therefore, he's going to get 10 points. I get three, he gets 10. Three, 10 to 43. All right. So now, next is going to be each tactile in your laboratory is worth the number of OP as shown. So we'll start with Lacerda here. So he is going to get 9, 14, 16 total for him. 16 to 59. Yours truly is going to get 5, 10, 14, 15, 16. At least we gained a little bit on him there. 16, 1, 2, 44. Okay. Uh, 
Points for advanced buildings, three for a level one, five for a level three. And then we both completed all of ours. So we'll start with Lacerda. He's going to get three. They're all level ones, aren't they, for him? They are. So three, six, nine. He's going to get 12 points. 12 to 71. Yours truly. I have one level three, which is going to be worth five. So three, six, nine, 12, 15, 20 points total for me. All right, that's a little bit better. 20 to 64. Okay. Then uh, somehow, <laughs> so each scientist now scores three points for each advanced building of the indicated types on Mars, no matter who owns it. So let's take a look. I, unbelievably, only one scientist. So this is for every mine, every uh, advanced building on a mine, which is going to be that and that and that. That's going to be another nine points, nine to 73. All right, so there's that. And finally, contracts. Nobody's got any. I was in action short. Oh, he does have an incomplete building, doesn't he? He does have an incomplete building. I missed that. Should he have built that earlier? On his last action, didn't he build advanced buildings? Because if he did, then he should actually get that. I think he did, didn't he? Somebody, let me know. That was his last action, wasn't it? I think so. Because he built this one, didn't he? No, he built a mine as his last action. Never mind, he loses five points. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. Never mind. All right. Uh... And I thought, oop, wrong thing. Uh, nope, all right, so that's the end of the game. So I lead 73 to 66, however, now let's check, uh, let's check for the goals. Level one, first colonist. Reach colony level three. We did. Complete at least one contract. Nope, failed. Complete a private goal. I did. Have a level six tech. I failed. Have more OP than Lacerda. I succeeded. The next generation. Level three. Yep. Have at least two contracts failed. One private goal, succeed. Two research tiles, succeed. Have four shelters built, succeed. Beat Lacerda by 10 or more, fail. Redemption was a failure. Damn you, Lacerda. Oh well. But I played it right. So at least there's that. I enjoyed this a lot. I really did. Um, I still feel like there's just, I feel like the bot just, it. the solo game of this, when you compare this to the elegance of the gallerist, I, it's not even close, which I would rather play as a solo game, and it's the gallerist. I mean, I really enjoy this game. I enjoy the theme. But honestly, the, the mental investment to me isn't worth it for the so, what I get out of it compared to a lot of the other solo games that I've played recently. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's my opinion. But... Uh, do I like on Mars? Yeah, I really enjoy it, but essentially having to 
have the capacity, the, the, just the mental space that the bot takes up in my head is just, it's exhausting. And it's not as, a reward, as rewarding an experience as, say, the gallerist, uh, BIOS, uh, May, or, um, BIOS Origins, Pax Transhumanity, those bots are just easier to run. And I, I mean, you look at something like Ground Floor too, right? I mean, Ground Floor is just a simpler game by default, but Transhumanity and BIOS Origins aren't. And those bots are just way more intuitive to me. That said, it's hard, and in a good way hard. Not, I, I'm not talking about the bots. I'm talking about the, uh, or the bot to run here. I'm talking about the uh, just being able to do well in this game is hard because of the level of planning that is involved. But I feel like, especially while streaming, I don't think I have the capacity to do well in this game or to maximize how well I could do while streaming this solo. It's just, just too much overhead on my on me to be able to do with that um but i think it's a really good game i just really don't want to play it solo again that's that's the truth of it uh yeah there you go so hopefully you guys enjoyed it um i think the bot does a really good job of what it does the only problem is it's just there's just too much crap to keep track of and it's just not running the bot's not fun and it, sure, I mean, if you play on Mars a lot, it becomes a lot more intuitive. I've now played it three times in the last couple of weeks since I last streamed this. And it flowed better this time, but I still don't feel like I enjoyed it anymore. If that makes sense? Yeah, it's inelegant. And bots shouldn't be a chore. Somebody said on a previous stream, I don't know what it was, it doesn't matter, that a bot should take 10 to 15 seconds at most and then move on. And, oh my God. I mean, if when we looked at, when we saw that last action, he not only took his action, right? Then he traveled, then he built, then it triggered that. It was just so much stuff to cover. And it was just, it's more than I want out of a bot. All right. So... Yeah. Uh, what's my favorite Lacerda game? Uh, Vino still. And I think the, ga uh, the Gallerist has the best bot of any of them. But I'll be honest, I've only done two on Mars now and the Gallerist for solo. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. Does Vino's have one a solo? I don't know. And Kanban. I haven't played... Solo, and I've never played EV, I've never played the driver's edit, none of that. So I played the original Kanban, and that's it. So I can't speak to those. And Escape Plan, eh. I think that's the lowest of all of VTOL's games. So, uh, of the two that I've played, best Lacerda solo game, the Gallerist, and it's not even close, but that's out of two, this and the Gallerist. So I can't really speak that. Uh, there you go. I have an hour until I have a, uh, a call with Mark Herman to get ready for Peloponnesian War tomorrow at 3 p.m. So I'm going to go uh, rest my brain for a little bit. And then uh, I will see you guys 3 p.m. tomorrow for Peloponnesian War. That is going to be the most unique solo game you guys have ever seen. So if you're into uh, solo games, check that out. If you're into war games, check that out. If you're into ancient Greek history, Check that out. Mark Herman's going to be in chat. You want to hang out with Mark and me? Come on by tomorrow. In the meantime, if you haven't already, give it a thumb down below and subscribe. Because if you don't subscribe, well, what are you doing here? Seriously, subscribe, people. And hit the little bell notification so that you know whenever I go live. And last but not least, do what Paul and Bob and Richard did during the stream. Go to pledgehc.com. Support the show over there uh, if you think it's worth a buck or two entertainment-wise or if you think 
the amount of money that I have helped you save on choosing good games for you and your group, then if you think it's worth a buck or two a month or a little bit more, go to pledgehc.com. Certainly would appreciate that, y'all. Check out the podcast over on pledge over on heavycardboard.com or your favorite podcast app. Other than that, I'm going to go uh, drink heavily. No, not really. I have Peloponnesian War set up downstairs. I need to continue that and then bring it up here to get it ready for tomorrow. So I will see you guys tomorrow, 3 p.m. Thanks, everybody. That was fun. It was a lot of work, but it was fun, like work up here, I'm saying. I Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. All right? Take care. Be safe. Continue social distancing. 3 p.m. Eastern, 9 o'clock across the pond. I will see you guys tomorrow. Take care, y'all. Damn it! Damn contracts. Arr! But you know what? Got it right. And ultimately, I'm okay with that. That was a good redemption week. Good stuff.